so I just raced over to the pod shed behind Holman's house. Why? From um, Adventure Off Road in the Ram dealership right next door, getting uh-huh. my seventy five hundred mile oil change in the uh, okay, T Rex. I have a question for you. Yes. Did you follow the oil change interval, or did you just take it in magically at seventy five hundred miles? I was supposed to do it at twenty five hundred and then eight thousand, and I went at seventeen. And 75. That doesn't answer my question. So, yeah, I'm pretty close to it. That's not what I asked. Well, what, the you, modern the, vehicles tell you when. There's not a set mileage anymore. It just tells you on the dash. And oh, you, I, you don't, I, don't, I don't go by that. That's what I, I was I, asking I go you. by the actual paper manual that is in my glove box. Yeah, okay. <sighs> Hold and on. So, before, no, stop, 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 stop. Wait, stop. I, I want to no. talk about this, though. No, what? What are we talking about? So, the thing is, is that I was what all excited. What could be more interested in more gifts from our listeners? We're going to get to that. Okay. I was all excited that I had free oil because, you know, Banks has a partnership with Amsoil. Okay. So, here's me gleefully swiping a case of 12 quarts of Zero uh, W40 mm-hmm. European fully synthetic AMS oil off the shelf at work today. And I throw it in the back of the truck and I race down to Huntington Beach. Mm-hmm. And then on the way down, I go, wait a minute. That's not my viscosity. I, no, it is my viscosity, okay. 040. But I thought, why is it specific to European cars? Uh-huh. Hmm, go to AMSOIL.com and I go, wait a minute, they have... The Signature Series 040. Hmm. I wonder what the difference is. So on the way down to Huntington Beach, I call Mark Nyholm, who's one of the engineers at Amsoil. And I say, hey, I've got this European oil. Can I use it? He goes, well, hold on just a second. We also have Signature Series. That's more for your truck. And I go, what's the difference? He says, certain formulations don't calcify at low RPM. And I said, calcify at low RPM? He goes, yeah, some oils, depending on the formulation, can calcify and create detonation, which is bad, of course. Everyone knows detonation is bad. And he says that certain oils, European oils that they have, are made for high RPM. And I want one that's made for low RPM because a lot of the times, like with a supercharged engine, it'll lug. Like my engine will go down 80 miles an hour at 1,500 RPM on the highway. So he goes, you probably shouldn't use that oil. Use the Mopar stuff for now. And on your next oil change, use the Signature Series 040 that's made for your And engine. you immediately called Gail back at work and said, hey, boss, can you walk out in the warehouse and see if we got some signature oil? <laughs> no, I... Uh, Why I, do you have European oil there? Because I have a Mercedes. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, the Mercedes takes the same viscosity as the Ram. Yes, it does. That's convenient for yeah, you. Yeah, hmm. yeah. You know, I recently had a meeting with Amsoil, and uh, I should have worked that into their support of the show. Just get lifetime supply of Amsoil, and we'll just talk about you all the time. I have a rack as tall as this pod shed yeah. full of... Oh, you've seen it. But I'm taking some next time I come over. Yeah. We have every viscosity. Although, we have diesel oil. Yeah, but I get like European five free oil changes as part of my deal. So I'm just going... I'm rolling with that until... I just spent $164 on an oil change. Uh, the Jeep is 265 or something like that. Mm. Well, I got I got, the, rotate, I got so. the Mike Rice hookup as well. So it's mm-hmm. a little lower than normal for the TRS. No, it's not. I paid I ca- straight I called retail. Him. I called him and I said, you know Jay's coming in today, right? He's like, oh, I'm I know. I'm sure you did. I'm, uh-huh. I'm, I'm sure you did. All right, listen. Ryan Kornblum hit me up on, uh, and this is our friend from Canada, who um, we think, I think he sent us a bunch of stuff. We're opening up this envelope. He asked for something for the pod shed. He said, what's the address? I sent it to him, and he's once again coming through before we come through for him. So a couple of keychains here. Oh, check it out. That's cool. Thanks, Ryan. You going to share it with me? No, I'm taking both of them. Look, in a TRX. Yeah. Oh, wow. Metal cutout keychain. This is a keychain. In a, in a Wrangler JL. This was cut on a... That's cool. Looks like a... Keychain guy. A keychain guy on Instagram and Facebook. Dude, that's rad. Thank you. That's super cool. You know what? Studio keys are going on this because right now the studio keys are not on anything. And they basically keep bouncing around my house. My wife's like, you know... You should probably hang those up somewhere where you will not leave them, forget them, or lose them, because then you can't do a show. And I'm like, I should do that, but I don't have an extra keychain, but now I do. Wow. Since Ryan gave us these keychains, uh-huh. do we owe it to him to not suck on this episode? We owe him a lot of things. Not sucking is high on that list. <laughs> all right. Hey, uh, you were talking about being world travelers and all that. So you went somewhere and I went somewhere. How'd that go? I went to Homestead, Florida to hang out with our man Jordan Mulbauer. Mm-hmm. Update! I had never been to Homestead, Florida before. You land in Miami and you head south about 40 minutes and you end up in the middle of nowhere. What was your rental car? 
a brand new 2022 Challenger. That's not horrible. V6 probably. V6. That's okay. 300 horse. Yep. It wasn't bad. I was actually I mean, that doesn't surprised. Suck. It didn't have CarPlay. That was annoying. And then I hmm. plugged in expecting- I'm pretty what? sure all of them have CarPlay. Couldn't get it to work. Hmm. Dude, had the seven inch screen. Car was uh, much quicker than I expected. I uh, did some Brodies. It was a great event. I'm going to play some audio for you. I think you'll enjoy it. I've got Jordan on here, a lot of lifted truck owners. That show is 95% lifted trucks, 30 inch wheels. Is that the new standards? 30s? Uh, 40, what's on 30s? 44s? They're like, yeah, 44s on 30s. There's not much tire. Since I didn't get audio, I will let you know that I awarded the Truck Show Podcast Award. Wait, wait, wait. You went to Florida as the Truck Show Podcast to represent us, and you didn't get audio of the Truck Show Podcast Award being awarded. I didn't, because every time I took out the recorder, uh-huh. which was my phone in this case, uh-huh. to record said person who won the award, uh-huh. he would ditch me. But then when I finally came up and had a nice conversation, not recording him, he was awesome. I don't know what this means. This sounds very uh, shenanigans. You remember Rob from Plan B Fab? Yeah. Rob doesn't like to be recorded, but Rob's happy to get an award and chat with me not being recorded. Hmm. So he had the most amazing first gen Ram. Should we just call Rob right now and ask him why he doesn't want to be recorded? I don't think he's going to pick up. (laughs) (laughs) So... I'll post some pictures of his first gen Ram. It is absolutely stunning. You may or may not be a fan of the is wheels. Is it the uh, freshness? It is so fresh and so clean. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I've got some great audio coming up after the intro. But first, you went to Moab. I, I did, and I got a, a a new best in the 392. A new best meaning miles per gallon. Oh yeah. <laughs> did 15.9 on the way oh, out. Oh no, joke. That's good. I made it all the way from home. To past Vegas at the Speedway okay. on one tank. Wow. I know. That's pretty impressive. It's awesome. It's amazing when there's no wind, mm-hmm. how, how good that thing is. You know what else I saw happen to you is you mm. crushed your exhaust pipe. Uh, that's not true. It's not true. What, nope. did you, what did you do to your exhaust? I crushed my right-hand side exhaust tips. Oh. And then I proceeded the next day to crush the left-hand side uh, <laughs> exhaust tips. So those are not high-tuck exhausts. This is what's funny about that is everybody crushes their tips on 392, even the ones that were out at you know, the, the media preview. Everybody was crushing tips on those stupid things. And they come off. So like, if you're not stupid, you can just take them off. But who wants to mess with taking their tips off? Every so time wait a minute. Off. Are they V-banded on? They are. So here's the thing. I called Mike Rice. Of course you did. <laughs> and I said, hey, uh, can you uh, order me the four tips, whatever you know your cost is? He's like, yeah, no problem. And he texts me. He goes, have a drink and call me back. Uh-oh. And I went, uh, crap. So I called him back. Uh, take a guess at what four exhaust tips on 392 cost the dealer. Four exhaust tips. You only have two. You were buying spares? No, I have four. And all four are crushed. Oh, because you have the cutouts. Okay. All right. How much are four exhaust tips from the dealer? From what I recall, yours were 304 stainless from the factory, and they're about eight inches long. I say they should cost no more than $60 each. $600. Oh, what? What? $600. More Get than that. out. Yeah. Get the f*** out. So I, I uh, made some calls, and next week it's going to Magnaflow for a new exhaust. Of course it is. <laughs> because... Because that's what you do when you don't want to spend six hundred dollars on four stock. Well, tips. and they'd offered uh, an exhaust, and I'm like, ah, you know, I'll see how this one does, you know, blah blah blah. But now I'm, I'm like, I'm not paying six hundred dollars to the dealer to have. So tips do I? I sense a uh, an interview with Rich over at Magnaflow. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, we'll, pro- we'll probably make that happen. Rich has not. Oh, well, he has been on the show. No, he's been on the many show. episodes ago. Yeah. Uh, and uh, people were asking, well, why not Borla? Well, David offered me an exhaust, but their bends interfere with the rear suspension. So if you have piggyback uh, shocks like I do. Uh, they won't. It won't work. So, and Richard had invited me to uh, test their exhaust a while back, and so I'm taking him up on it. It's actually a really, really high end, very nice piece, and their tips are tucked up higher, and they're closer to center line. Whereas, and most important, mm-hmm. they don't come crushed. They don't come crushed. So uh, anyway, I, I'm trying to get that done before I head over to Overland Expo because my uh, Jeep will be in the uh, AEV booth. So mm. that's uh, Humble brag. super important. Uh, so anyway, my trip was uh, 1,695 miles. 
Took me uh, 39 hours and 19 minutes of driving. Well, that that includes all my off-roading and stuff. I so for a second thought you were going to say it was $1,692. No, no, no. It's probably as close and to that. And fuel and parts. I, including the day where I averaged 6.7 miles per gallon, uh, my entire trip, 15.5. I'm, I'm happy with that. Totally happy with that. And you may have heard the uh, name Randy Probst. Yes. So Randy, one of the most famous championship U.S. Uh, race drivers in the world, rode with me one day on the trail. He had never been off-roading before. Nothing like crawling for low, crawling up waterfalls and stuff. Oh, wait, wait. So How's the, that possible? So the whole He's day, done every kind of racing. So the whole day, he and I were talking about how to off-road. I was teaching him how to off-road. It was super weird. I'm like, dude, you're one of the best wheelmen in the entire He's, world. He is one of the fastest men up Pikes Peak. And one of the nicest guys you could ever meet. So yeah. I got to uh, hang out with him and ride shotgun. Uh, he rode shotgun with me and uh, showed him a good time in, in uh, Moab, which was pretty awesome. And uh, I think I have a lifelong friend now. Do you really? Yeah. Did we, you get his cell phone? Did I get a cell phone? Did you get his number? Yes. I could I could text him anytime. We could have him on the I don't show. Believe. Show me his number. Seriously. Pull it up on your phone. Randy Probst. Read this text uh, right here. On my phone. All right. This is a, wow, I've never seen so many people in a group text before. That was all the people at the uh, Bill Stein house, which is a whole other story. Holy crap. Oh, by the way, I saw your uh, your photos from the Bill Stein house. Yeah. You had like YouTubers oh, and yeah. Instagrammers. We had Alex and, like, Choi. We had racers like um, like Cade Rod. We tell had... me you had, uh, tell me you asked uh, Alex Choi, who's famous for his crazy supercars. Mm-hmm. Did you have a discussion about... No, but I got him drunk. His, his Tesla? No, I have a picture. Not his Tesla, but the no, no, Tesla no. that nosedived. I, I got him drunk and I have pictures of him hugging a shock on a couch. A shock on a couch? Yeah. He was snuggling with a 5100. <laughs> then that's not a euphemism? Anyway, read what Randy said. Hi, it's Randy. We took Barbara's forerunner on the Jeep trail to Arches. Sean's off-road advice paid off many times. Our Bill Stein street heavy-duty shocks worked well on the moderately rough off-road. As Sean and Junior told me, the higher shock speeds increased damping and the control was quite good. Continuing the adventure, we exited the park to the north on Salt Valley Road. It was a fitting farewell to the Bill Stein Moab experience. How rad is that? Wow. Forget Randy in a te- group text is like, yeah, Sean gave me some good advice hmm. about driving. I'm, I'm going to carry that one for a while. That's awesome. So anyway, the, uh, the Bill Stein. Oh, oh, I have some for that. So that, so that, so that happened. Yep, that happened. That happened. You are sitting in the presence of greatness. No, not no, at all. No, no, greatness adjacent. <laughs> no, not oh, even that. What? No, I was going to say uh, at the the driving instructor for uh, Randy Probst. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. That is weird. That's right? like being the Stig's Stig. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Hmm. So anyway, Randy, super nice guy. Uh, if if he ever hears this, uh, I just want to let him know he's not going to listen to this. He might not. But don't be stupid. I I uh, want to say thank you. It was he was a pleasure to have uh, in in my uh, vehicle, and the fact that I got to take him out. Uh, by the way, we're in this house. Other than Randy, I'm the next oldest person by a lot. Like probably. 10 years. Who were the four girls that you shot on the, sitting on the counter, like all talking those, girl talk? Those were all the wives and girlfriends while all the dudes were gone. And so I just thought it was hilarious. I'm like, I'm going to go talk to the girls while all these dudes are like 50 feet away looking at like Alex Troy videos on his laptop. I'm like, what's wrong with this world? And they're all sm- just super hot, super sweet, nicest yep. girls. Anyway. They they wrote me into a drinking game, which is awful. Uh, I'm too old for this. So wait, they were playing beer pong. No, they were playing. Uh, the che- table was nope. covered in beer. They were they were playing Cheers to the Governor, and then once Cheers to the Governor ended, they decided to go on a six on six game of flip cup. Well, uh. this was flip cup uh, elimination, and our friend Colin Coates from Built to Wander was in the house also. And uh, his wife is a beast at Flip Cup, dude. And so, but I'm looking at these guys, and they're all drinking like White Claw, Seltzer, Utah beer. So we had half a bottle of Buffalo Trace left. Mm-hmm. So I decided that I was going to teach them how to drink. And for their ounce to ounce, when they did their seltzers in the Flip Cup, I did an ounce of Buffalo Trace. I killed that dude. That bottle was gone. Oh my god, you must have been. Hammered. We were up till four thirty in the morning. Oh. We were we were singing with Brent Hensley. Um, he, I think he's been on before. He's the one of the Bill Stein um, like influencers who has that demon gladiator. Okay. Okay. 
So he pulls out his acoustic guitar at like three o'clock in the morning, and he's we're not playing. We're, really? Dude, yeah, we're jamming Cade Rod and me and him, and we're singing. And everybody, I was the last person to go to bed. I was up at eight thirty in the morning, down the stairs by nine, and people were looking at me like like Jesus had risen, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> and what was amazing is I had texts all day because word had gotten out about how hammered the house got and that I drank all these kids under the table and they're like, we thought you'd be dead. And like, <laughs> my phone's like, bling, 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 bling. you know, all these little texts come in. It's like, dude, I heard about last night. You're a beast. And then I had somebody go, are you alive? Are <laughs> wow. you in the hospital? And I'm like, no, it's normal. <laughs> so like people sobbing in the morning <laughs> and they're, they're like, no, it's normal is your quote. <laughs> Listen, this is what I had to teach the youngins. They're like, dude, I can't believe how much you drink. Oh my God, dude. And I'm like, listen, if you're going to play, you got to ring the bell in the morning, all right? That's what you got to do. You got to got to get up and make the day yours. And you know See, what, what people don't realize, uh-huh. what people don't know is that Holman has a secret bypass liver. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I guess it's just I drink enough burp. Like, uh-huh. uh, listen, so I haven't really pushed the limit in a long time. Let me tell you, I'm not going to do it again. That may be the last time ever. But just like Toby Keith, I'm not as good as I once was, but I'm as good once as I ever was. Yeah, that's what that was right there. Dude, all of them wrecked. Absolutely wrecked. They all look like death. And me in the next one, I'm like, woo, sun's out. Let's go wheeling. It was awesome, <laughs> dude. I was pretty. I, I was, you showed up the young and Dude, they're looking at me like, dude, the old gray man, he can, he can drink. And uh, it, it felt good to win one for the for our generation. That's an interesting achievement, by the way. R- out drinking yeah. like 20 and 30 year olds. Yes. Yeah. Like I said, uh, I won't be doing it again. That may be the last time, but damn it, I went out strong. You had to. How many uh, Tylenols did you pop? Uh, none. No, I just drank a bunch of water. All right, I'm going to show you a picture right here, and I need you to uh, explain what this picture is. That was later in the night, but what does that look like? Let me hold this right here. All right, I see four cans of something. No, 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 the bottle. Oh, the bottle. That's a bottle that is uh, about one fifth left in it. That's that's the big bottle though. Okay, that wasn't the big bottle. bottle. Okay, that's almost that was that was like halfway through the night. This is uh, this is how it ended. Oh, here's by the way, here's Alex on the couch, drunk and hugging a shock. Oh, there it is. Super funny. All right. There it is. Died a hero. <sighs> Completely empty. empty. Oh, my God. Buffalo Trace. Oh, so good. Ah, I have a headache just looking at that yeah. photo. Yeah, well. I'm, God, I don't know how uh, you did that. You, but you've trained. I've, you're, you're, I've you're, trained. You're a professional athlete. Listen, when people look at me, they don't see champion. But uh, <laughs> but, but that's how I get you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I sneak in quietly and schlubby on the side, and then I go for the kill when you're not looking. You are the sleeper. I, I definitely can sleep some. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's the undercover drinker. That just means napping, by the way, at our age. <laughs> All right, uh, we should get into the show. We no, should... <laughs> why? It's only 85 minutes long, the This intro. is going to be a long one, too, mm-hmm. right? I think you have all sorts of stuff from Florida Truck Meet. And... I, we don't have time for it. Oh, all right. Push it off to right. the next episode. Good. We're done. See you guys. Thanks for no, tuning no, no, in. No, 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 oh, no, 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 no. We have sponsors that we need to uh, We need to. We sure care. do. All right, we got Nissan. And by the way, would you guys... Don't even tell them to stop. <laughs> Don't even. I knew you were going to say that. Don't. I, listen, didn't, you guys I just been, said you guys. You guys have been frontier spotting the crap oh my out, of God, our, out, of, out of our email. Please L- keep doing it. Let me just let me just do a couple here. Sure. Okay. Just just a couple. I should be the one complaining. Look at this. Look at this list of all. Look at these lists. Look at this. Okay. I printed out the okay. dozens and dozens and dozens okay, of, calm down, of, of physical mailing addresses. Right. You started this. You can't do. complain about I'm it. Not, I'm not. You uh, are. Shh. Chris Myers, the other day was the first time in a while my wife is driving and not me. Wouldn't you know it? I seen four Frontier Pro 4X in the same color in under 24 hours. Took a few pictures of two of them. Hashtag Frontier Spotting. And yeah, buddy. That's from uh, from Chris Meyer. And then we have uh, Kevin Carroll. Hey, guys, don't know if you stopped this campaign yet, but here's a pic of a pretty sweet-looking Frontier from the windshield of my less-than-fun-to-talk-about work car. Great show and five stars. And we got one here from uh, Joseph Barbarino from Sear Spotting on my way to Costco listening to the Truck Show podcast and decided to look for some Frontiers. On my five-mile drive to Costco, I saw five Frontiers. All pictures taken from the front seat of my 89 F350 Fummins. I sent you an email about a couple years back when I was building it. Here's a picture of it with my forerunner up in Big Bear. Bonus Nissan mini truck. Here's my address. I mean, just on and on. How about David Turry? I got my stickers, and I put one up on the beer fridge for everyone to see. 
How about uh, Colin Eberding, Frontier Spotting? Hey, boys. Greetings from the north. Here's one of hundreds of Frontiers in Canada. We love these trucks. Can you guess what I'm driving? Your podcast is on top of my playlist. He looks like he is... Oh, that's a big, tall mirror. That's going to be a semi-truck because he's really high off the ground, and it's very vertical. Hard or to see in that photo. Might yeah. be a transit van or something like that. Maybe it's a van. Robert Wimpy says... Uh, just his address. Sends a picture. <laughs> just, it just sends his address. <laughs> Robert, you got to give us a love here. How about our friend Justin Gore? Hey, fellas. Justin, your favorite Subaru owner here, attaches a pic of the new Frontier with that kind of goofy sport bar taken in lovely Manhattan Beach on a post-rainy day. Insert California Papa's News because it's such a nice day. Uh, from the Banks Pedal Monster Powered Forester Wilderness. If you all feel inclined to send a sticker, address is below, even though I still have one from my visit with you guys at the old studio. Anyways, you tour awesome. Keep up the five-star work. And yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. We got uh, Nicholas Satano, Frontier Spotting. Hello, Liberace and Houdini. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're Liberace. No yeah. way. I listen oh, to wait a minute. Hold on a second. Houdini hides things, <laughs> so I don't know. I'm hiding my affliction for bourbon. Mm. Uh, hello, Liberace and Houdini. I listen to the podcast on my commutes to and from work, and y'all keep me very entertained. Today is luck would have it. You were talking about the Frontier Pick Challenge at the exact same time I was passing a truck full of them as I was crossing the Illinois border back into Wisconsin. It was like it was meant to be. I'm an avid diesel enthusiast, which is how I found your show, so I love guests like Gail and Corey. I'm on my fourth D-Max now, currently driving a 22 Denali 3500. It's my daily and also used to tow our fifth wheel. How's that towing episode coming along? Oh, by the way, talk to a representative at Kurt at Moab. I might be lining up a tow episode. That's what Kurt told me, and then I they know, lied. But I found the vice president. Oh. So he said, hit me up. I'll did get my you, people. Did you get his actual phone yes, number? and his card. Two cards. The one from the mothership and the one from the brand. I got two emails for the dude. I think both I'm, lines have been I'm gonna, disconnected. I'm track him down. <laughs> he says, a uh, fun fact for the show is at 997 reviews, I took my wife's phone and gave five-star reviews, then drove to my mom's house and used her phone for a five-star nice. review before using mine to cast a thousandth review. Five-star review. Yeah, buddy. I'd love some stickers, but I want to hold my breath. Lightning. Uh, and then he says, uh, you know. Don't do me dirty like that, dude. I've been mailing them out every single morning. Well, That's he, the first thing I do. Listen, Nick then says, uh, thanks and keep up the good work. He says, P.S., okay. we don't have Whataburger or In-N-Out here in Wisconsin, but we, we do have Culver's, which we know. And he says, it's better anyways. It's top five for me. I'll happily take my butter burger with a side of uh, curds any day. Same here. PPS, want to hook up a fan with a bank's discount? Well, you know what you do. You slide in the Lightning's uh, DMs. But, dude, we have – there are another 30, and I'm not going to go through all of them, uh, Frontier Spotting. We'll save them for other episodes. But, dude, you guys have been hitting the Frontier Spotting hard. Bring it. So now that you know how many are out there, don't be jealous. Be like those other Frontier drivers. Go pick yourself up one. You can head on down to your local dealership. Or you can head to NissanUSA.com where you can build and price <laughs> – the Nissan Frontier that will outdo all those other frontiers out there. Just occurs to me yes. that there's probably a Frontier Owners Facebook group, and they're talking to each other going, have you noticed people are <laughs> photographing us? That would what's, be funny. What's up with everyone taking their phones out and shooting photos of us? I mean, we have a lot. We definitely have enough where we could bother some people. We could cause, like... Scare, Un- unrest, yeah. unrest in the frontier community. <laughs> but it's okay, we're friendlies. We uh-huh. just want to highlight you guys and lift you up. Uh, listen, if you need a bigger truck, you got the Nissan Titan or the Titan XD, five year, one hundred thousand mile warranty, and also in my driveway again. If you noticed the blue one it's sitting back. there, just as I pulled up this yep. afternoon, I thought. Why does he have the Titan again? <laughs> why? And do, I, why not? That's Holman two Lightning Zero for the uh-huh. Titan. <laughs> <sighs> and I have it for a while. What does that mean? I don't know, but you can go to Nissan USA and uh, build and price one for yourself, Lightning. You going to tell me why you have it for a while? Not on the air. Interesting. Hmm. If you've ever wanted to know what's actually happening under the hood of your truck and your dashboard's not displaying it, you need to check out the Banks iDash. It's the single most powerful OBD plug-and-play monitor and diagnostic device ever freaking made it's incredible a lot of the parameters that it displays are patented by our good friend mr gail banks it'll display hundreds of parameters across its five customizable screens you can view up to eight parameters per screen and it plugs into any vehicle 2008 or newer if you're curious about what's happening under your hood or any of your drivetrain check out the banks i dash at bankspower.com and if you've got a truck where the uh, factory shocks are blown out or you're looking for an upgrade or you're looking for a lift, head over to uh, BillsteinUS.com where you will find out a plethora 
of monotube shock options. Shocks all the way from the direct replacement 4600 all the way up to the 8100 series, everything in between. Bill Stein's now in their 150th year, and they even got a new logo to uh, freshen up the brand, but that doesn't mean that they've got old technology. Soon you'll be able to get the brand new DSA Plus 60 millimeter 8112 with the dual speed adjusters. Damn. They've got a new uh, JL kit with uh, springs that gives you a one inch perfect for 35s, and you know, here you can huck it. And you can find them on everything factory from Frontier Pro 4Xs, Titan Pro 4Xs, Ram Rebels, TRXs, and even the new Jeep Rubicon 20th Anniversary Level 2, which is the AEV setup with either 5100s or 8100s. And I found out at Easter Jeep Safari, Mopar just dumped the uh, shocks in their Mopar kit, that other brand, and uh, they're not going with Bill Steins moving forward. Comfort and durability are the name of their game, and they don't compromise on control either. Head over to BillsteinUS.com. The Truck Show. We're going to show you what we know. We're going to answer what the truck. Because truck rides with The Truck Show. We have the lifted. We have the lowered and everything in between. We'll talk about trucks that run on diesel and the ones that run on gasoline. The Truck Show. The Truck Show. It's the Truck Show with your hosts, Lightning and Holman. And I turned your mic almost all the way off, but I could still hear you. What do you want to get to first, Mr. Holman? You want to jump into Florida truck meet? Uh, yeah. Do you do you have anything? I mean, I you said you went there. I'm not sure that you actually did anything. <laughs> I did hardly saw any photos from there. Mm, no, it's not true. I posted not, a lot. I'm like, hey, lighting, I, go get some business for us. And you're like, oh, so I didn't talk to that person. I talked to a lot of folk, and I started with Jordan. Jordan Mole, mother Bauer, update. update! <laughs> I just rolled into Homestead Speedway. Is that the official name of the Speedway? Homestead Miami Speedway. All right. And this place is, it looked to me to be huge, but you say it's just smaller than Daytona where you were, although I wouldn't have guessed that. Yeah, it's definitely probably about half the size, maybe, I don't know, quarter, quarter smaller. It's definitely nowhere near as big as Daytona was. Vendors-wise, we can't fit everybody in here like we used to, so. Now, I was coming through the tunnel following some of these mud trucks, (laughs) And I'm not going to say I had to roll up the windows because they rolled coal all over me, but yeah. maybe that happened. Yeah, you got a little black on your face there. <laughs> I did, right? You need to wipe it off here. I got to take a shower in my in my sweet trailer. Scrub that off and give it to your kids for Christmas. Now, Jordan got me a trailer about the size of this uh, Challenger that I rented here, and the trailer looks like it's fit for a king. You get your own little place. You get your own little side-by-side. Yeah. Yep. Oh, Too bad uh, Sean couldn't be here. If Sean was here, we would have had to upgrade you and do a bigger camper and nicer. Oh, yeah. Oh, I would have put him in a tent. How was your camper? It was brand new. Uh-huh. It was about the size of the pod shed and had all the amenities. And I was stunned that the mattress was comfortable. Because oh, they're right. always rock solid and like 10 millimeters thick and they're just <laughs> awful. And this was really comfortable. Half of the, one of like I think I slept in one of the mornings to like 11. And I'm like, hey, there's a truck show going on outside. We were yeah. around the backside. It was peaceful. You must not have been drinking the night before. Not much. I didn't drink much. No one I was with was but drinking. But you still that slept much. till eleven. Like I, you know, lighting. Like, sometimes you got to get up and ring the bell. Okay. Yeah. I was excited that Jordan, who is your fellow brown water drinker, was going to teach me a thing or two about it. Didn't happen. I said, "Hey, are you going to teach me about bourbon and whiskey and the differences and 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 teach me some snobbery?" No. Nah. Why? I, I, why didn't it happen? Did he leave you alone? He no. didn't toilet paper your trailer the he middle did, of the night? He just sat there. Didn't drag you out or anything? None of those things. He just sat there in his in his like Barca lounger reclining chair, with the hell uh-huh. his, his lounge chair okay. in front of his uh, trailer, and he drank, and I had a sour, and we chatted, and it was fun, and Seems but we just didn't, no. It was lacking? Like, yeah. Hmm. No. Hmm. Right. Like remember he was he was Mr. Bougie. I had a, I had a rooftop tan on his last Jeep, and now with the three ninety two, he fell off one time. And was like I'm never doing this. Well, anymore. it was the middle of the night, and like he would have you get old, and you have to pee a lot, right? Oh. So or he's drunk and whatever, and he doesn't like climbing up and down. Plus, you can't put apparently you can't put a tent on top of the three ninety two, mm-hmm. like safely. So now he's back to tent camping on the ground. 
You know none of that's true, right? It's not that that's what you told me. No, it's not. You could put a, a rooftop tent on your 392 because it wasn't no. it wasn't it wouldn't hold a weight. You don't listen to me very well. I've no, never I said don't. that. What, no, I said, the reason? No, I said I don't want to drill through the roof of my nice painted roof and I don't want all the creaks and cracks that can come with it. I want a nice quiet thing. Now, with all this power, it's probably better not to have that higher center of gravity, but it's not unsafe. If I if there was a good roof mounting system for the JL that wouldn't crack the top or make a bunch of noise, I would I would totally be into it. So if you drilled holes and it made a bunch of noise and it and it cracked, it's unsafe. So I'm t- somewhat true, somewhat <laughs> correct. Just making similar. It, I'm just, I'm truth adjacent. I, I hear the words, but they're not making <laughs> sentences. Tell me what to expect tomorrow, Friday, here at Homestead Speedway for Florida Truck Meet. So our Fridays is like a hybrid of vendor move-in day plus show day because you've got the vendors that didn't show up today, obviously because, you know, it's Thursday. It's a work day, so everybody's trying to get stuff done. It's going to be a little hectic in the morning trying to get vendors placed and everything, but about... Come on now. I did Thursday to freaking Monday. You know how many days Holman did? Zero. Uh, Let's see. I did Friday through Saturday. Last time. No, I meant at Moab. Well, I, no, I mean at My at event, Florida. I was there for a nah, week. Florida truck meet. You did zero. Listen, sometimes we have to uh, divvy up the responsibilities. If Jordan wouldn't have picked the one weekend I can't go. Sorry, Jordan, no. He called me. I said, listen, that's the one time I can't go. I've got obligations to, to Moab, dude. What's the, how is the community different down here? Because South Florida, very different than like Daytona. It's just culturally, it's different, right? Culturally, it's different. It's super welcoming. Everyone's very, you know, hospitable. I, I love the people down here. Well, I didn't, they, I didn't sense that in Daytona they weren't hospitable. I know you had different dealings with like the city council, but like when I was driving around the town, the townspeople seemed like they were welcoming. Is that not true in yeah, Daytona? In Daytona was definitely. Uh, uh, if, I don't know, 50-50 shot, you know, when you come up to people. Down here, it's almost guaranteed every person's going to be nice to you as long as you respect them right off the bat. That's why I told people, like, I'm going to keep coming to this show, coming to this area from now on, whether I get Daytona back or not. So I just, I can't get away from this place. The Even the, the track people down here are super easy to work with. They're nowhere near as tough as Daytona crowd, you know, when... We would try to even get on the track at Daytona. It was going through 10 different hoops to try to just drive on the track. Out here, we can park all of our VIPs on the track, and we can just walk out there all willy-nilly whenever we want to. So I can lay down on the checkered on the start-finish line like I did last year? Yeah, yeah. Nice. We can bring some whipped cream out there. You can <laughs> Whatever you want to do, Jay. I don't I know if I want to do the whipped cream thing here, but uh, <laughs> we'll see. So you said down here everyone's welcoming. What about the truck scene? How does the truck scene differ, or is it the same crew just coming further south because for those of you that don't know homestead i feel like we're only 50 miles from the southern tip of florida is that right yeah so 30 minutes down the street you're in the keys i mean crystal clear blue water even out outside i've never been to the keys ever well we're gonna go to the keys while we're down here so yeah I'm going to make that happen. All right. So what's next on the agenda? We're going to uh, set up camp, have some food, and then... Yep, yep. I got you some chicken parmesan sandwiches. Oh, yes. Yeah. And do we have uh, beer, or do I need to go get that? We got beer. We got bourbon. We got vodka. What, you know... So you need to... This is a Jordan teaches lightning about bourbon trip. This is it. And Sean will be proud of me, because I, I brought some good stuff. I got some 141 proof Jack Daniels that'll light you up on fire. Oh, dear God. Or I got some Eagle Rare that's only 90 proof that, you know, smooth and nice. And you can have it with a cigar and just enjoy it. All right. I'm in. Let's go. All right. Spoiler alert. Didn't get to the keys. Okay. Didn't have the brown water. Yeah. Didn't have the beer. Yeah. But you had a golf cart. I did have a Kubota. And that was cool. That made me happy. So I didn't need any of those other things as long as I had the Kubota and I was just hauling ass doing my little 25 miles an hour by myself. That was cool. Did anybody recognize you? Nope. <laughs> In the next piece, Holman, you're going to hear some wind. Oh, the very thing that you told me last episode. Sure did. Not to bring to the studio. Got it. Yeah. As I'm recording this, all I could think about is, crap, I got to get out of the wind because this is all I'm going to hear about from Holman because I warned him, when you go to Moab, don't bring me back audio with wind noise. Well, next week's audio, you'll find out whether I brought you back wind noise or not. (laughs) You have to wait. So I roll up on these big tractor trailers pulling these low boys. In your really, Kubota. In my Kubota. My, in these low, low boys. And these are custom fabricated low boys for these mega trucks. 
And apparently, these are the originators of Trucks Gone Wild. They do tug of wars in front of like nightclubs all over Florida and hell, the East Coast. So I re- I'm like, I had to know more. So what's your name and how are you affiliated with Trucks Gone Wild? Matt Steele. I own it. What's the story with this? Uh, well, we bring this? out the side by side so we can get all our stuff around because we bring out for the tug of war, we bring out the light poles and we bring out, you know, just straps and clevises and shackles and it, stuff's heavy. And we're parked, whatever, a quarter mile away. So we got the skid steer there for recovery, just in case something happens, we can get the trucks up and out of there. The worst thing that can happen is a truck breaks, it can't move, and you've got no equipment to move it. And you got a couple thousand people standing there watching, right? That's bad. That used to happen to us like 20 years ago. Now, you know, we bring in some stuff so we can, we, basically we can keep the show going. Let's back up. We have listeners all over the world. Right. But I don't know how many understand what Trucks Gone Wild is. I think once they see what you do, it's going to be all over the place. It's a lot of fun. Basically, it's it's all about just people getting together and having a good time. We run a tug-of-war event, which is basically two trucks with a big strap back-to-back on a concrete pad, and you try to drag the other guy kicking and screaming backwards, right? Realistically, nobody cares who wins and loses. It's all about putting on the show, just roasting the tires. You're going to see dudes come out with the stereos pumping, the doors open. They get in place. They climb in the back of the truck. They got a T-shirt cannon. They're blowing off their T-shirts that have likenesses of their trucks on them. They're getting the crowd all pumped. And then they hook it up to another guy who was just throwing out, like, like stuffed animals. It's just... Like, it's mind-blowing. <laughs> All LED lights you, on the bottom. You're saying stuffed animals? Everything, dude. Okay. I, there's not much we haven't seen by now. And it's just, it's a party. It's a good time. Now, and what happens when you've got a big mud truck that's lifted taller than you and I? Yeah. And parts start breaking because he gets traction. And it's, ar, 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 you know, he's you grabbing. No. You don't see as much carnage as you used to. The trucks are built a lot better than they did. There used to be a time when uh, we had eight trucks at the event and nine of them would break. Right, which isn't even mathematically possible, but it happened. <laughs> and nowadays, I mean, we we get events. Yeah, I don't know how many people are going to be here this weekend doing it. Um, you know, but I mean, you could do a good show with 15, 20, 30 or more trucks. You got you got way too many. Uh, they don't break like they used to because you know the drive lines are beefed up, the axles are bigger, and uh, and you don't break. Yeah, you don't break when you're spinning. It's it's when it catches. That's when the bad things happen. What what's breaking primarily? U joints, axle shafts. That's about it, right, Chuck? The trannies get hot. Sometimes you get a quick little tranny fire thing. That's about it. And what are you what are you roping the two trucks together with so it doesn't break? Oh, that's a it's like an eighty thousand pound rated like triple woven strap that is not like a bubble rope it's something bigger than that well bubble ropes are pretty strong but it's bigger and then everybody thinks that when the strap breaks if it ever happens which has happened we've seen it happen like twice in 20 years everybody thinks my god what am i in a goddamn windstorm i didn't know it was that bad that's seriously dude i'm gonna what is wrong with you you sit there and you're like dude dude, don't come back with wind and then you like bring a hurricane well this guy was working i didn't want to pull him into uh into a tent or whatever okay (laughs) pulling him into a tent would be really weird but maybe if you said can we go in the cab of your truck that wouldn't but, have he, but he, this, while he's talking to me he's working like right. he's, he's prepping these trucks he's taking the shackles off you know letting well, tie I mean, elves if, loose listen if you were uh, you should have just told me you were a lot lizard and you'd like to go in his cab i bet he would have followed you up there when and if the strap breaks it drops and hits the grounds and the trucks pretty much stop so which is very hard to explain to anybody who hasn't seen it is it because they're just peeling out they're just roasting the tires so they're oh, they don't have any inertia they're geared low they don't have any inertia there's nothing all of that it's just it's like boom and the truck just kind of lurches forward and stop. So what's the magic for pulling someone in your direction? Is it lower gear? Is it putting in four-wheel low? Being heavier. <laughs> Being heavier, really? <laughs> right, I mean, taller, the, yeah, you, it, it can be where the hitch is is up there, too. That's my business partner, Chucky. Gotcha. Nice to meet you, this. Chucky. How you doing? Yes sir. yes, sir. How you doing? Good. 20 years we've been doing these things, and, and Chuck has built every badass truck that you could that you could see in the country, and he's he knows all that stuff as far as the the angles and the science behind it. Where did you, know? you guys start? What's the story behind the company? Well, we don't have enough tape in your recorder for that one. <laughs> it's digital. I can go on for a while. <laughs> uh, that new fancy stuff. I'm not used to that. Uh, 
I don't know, originally probably eight seconds. I've been mud bogging and building trucks my whole life, but eight seconds is where Matt Orlando. and I met in Orlando, yeah, and it was a nightclub, but we did truck events there. It's called Eight Seconds? It was. It's not there anymore, but it was. That's a, what my wife calls me, by the way, which sucks. <laughs> oh, man, it's bad, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it was a nightclub in Orlando, and uh, that's where we kind of really got started, and that was 20-plus years ago. Yep. So you were doing it outside the nightclub? Yes, sir. In the front, in the parking lot? In, yeah. the, in the parking lot about a block from the skyscrapers in downtown Orlando. Yeah. So it was a pretty good backdrop for yeah, us. Really cool. Oh, that wow. was good times. Good times. Yeah. And so it started organically, like you guys just doing it for fun because you were building trucks and you figured let's do a tug of war in the parking lot. Or did they say we need a spectacle to get people to our club? How did that start? I think it was a club promotion thing. It was a Friday night we were doing them on because uh, they did cow uh, bull riding, bull riding, not cow riding. They did bull riding on Saturday night. So Friday night they were kind of slacking. Cow riding might be a little boring. Just I, you know, it's something new, you know. All the kids are trying it. The the tugs we did on Friday night to promote the club and it works. And when did it turn into a business where you guys were touring around the country doing trucks gone wild? <laughs> Jeez. When the nightclub closed. Oh, okay. So what happened was we had all these big badass events going on at the club, right? And everything's good. You get, you get, uh, we had kind of taken over Saturday nights there because that was the truck events became more popular. And then all of a sudden the, the club closes down and we're like, what are we going to do now? We're doing these badass events. We, we have nowhere to do them. And it was either quit or figure out what we were going to do. And that was probably, that was probably 19 or 20 years ago. And in retrospect, that club closing down was probably the best thing that ever happened to us because it forced us to grow and it forced us to expand. Had that club not closed, we don't, one could say that we may not even be doing this anymore. And we didn't have a choice. So, yeah. yeah. We had an older gentleman approach us uh, next town over from us and said, hey, I want to do a truck event. He had an old rundown mud park, a small one. And uh, we said, yeah, we'll do it. And uh, we brought that back, you know, into the mainstream again. And uh, we just expanded from there. And then the same thing happened there. Basically, he came to us one day. We, like, saved the park. And we got it to the point where he was making some pretty good money from our shows, you know. And, uh, and he was like, thank you, boys. I got this. I don't need y'all anymore. And basically oh, kicked us out. No. And you're like, that, again, what are we going to do now? Again, looking back, best thing that ever happened. Because that... that that also made us go. Forced you to take it to the road. Well, and that's when we really, st the, when the nightclub closed, we kind of spread around Florida a little bit. When that track closed, that's when we started traveling around the whole country. Keep in mind, at this point in time, we were all on uh, MySpace and AOL and chat rooms. It was very unique. We had our own forum. We probably had the biggest off-road forum at the time. And that was how we did all our advertising. It was crazy. You know, it wasn't instant posting and videos. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. any of that. It was, it was difficult crazy. at the time. How would you describe this whole scene to someone on the West Coast who has <laughs> never seen a mud park or a tug of war? Like, what, how, to you, you grew up with it. But for me, from L.A., it's so foreign and awesome uh you know i don't know we think about that all the time and it, they have a lot of dunes and desert stuff over there and um i don't know uh if it work or not we're willing to try something you know Any, anytime i'm announcing stuff i always like to ask you know who's here watching this for the first time whether it's something out in the mud or at a tug of war thing and and it's kind of a cliche thing that i've been saying for years but i mean it i said the first the most important thing is do not try to figure it out like don't sit don't overanalyze it You'll just ruin it for yourself. Just sit back, laugh, take it in, have fun. It's like pro wrestling. If you like pro wrestling, then your buddies are all like, you know it's fake, right? It's like, no, I know it's predetermined, but don't ruin that for me. I'm still getting into the show aspect of it, right? It's the same thing. Got it. So. Congratulations on the success, gentlemen. It's fun. This is very, I can't wait to see it tomorrow night. Thank it's going to be a good time. So Saturday night, this event went off. Truck's gone wild. And what was really cool- Was it at the is, Speedway still? Yes. But it was in front, and it was free for anyone in Homestead. So you, it didn't blow up like the local uh, mall or anything like no. Daytona? <laughs> no, no, no. So they Crazy. got Homestead apparently allocated a piece of pavement that they don't use for awesome. parking. And they put up K-Rail, those cement blocks, right? So keeping the people away. And they had, my God. 20, 30 trucks, maybe more, big, small. They had a couple of utility trucks, just ram like chassis cabs, pulling other trucks, uh, gas, diesel, uh, guys rolling coal, guys running clean. Like it was really kind of interesting, but it was like pro wrestling in that they were going back and forth. You pull me, 
then I'll let off, and then you pull me backwards. So they're, and, they're, know, they're, yeah. It's like watching the Aquabats. You know you're going to hear some music, but you're also watching an entertaining show. Yeah, five guys in spandex dressed like um, uh, mermaids. Five? There's like 20 of them up there. <laughs> they're dressed like Aquaman, right? Well, I mean, they're the Aquabats. Yeah. I mean, they're, it's, it's, a, it's a live cartoon to ska music, kids. It's awesome. So this guy you're going to like. He's one of your people. So, Holman, this next interview is of a guy in a field in a Silverado with a rooftop tent by himself way in the corner. And I thought, what's up with this guy? Like, there's no one else here with a rooftop tent. Maybe he was part of the rooftop tent club and he was the only member there. Sure. <laughs> Lighting here with the Truck Show podcast. What's your name? David Crane. David, this is the uh, the only rooftop tent I've seen out at Florida Truck Meet. Yes, I believe so. What's the story behind this uh, Silverado? What year is this? 2011 Silverado, running on 40s from Pennsylvania. Drove all the way here. No way. 1,400 miles. What is it about this show? And we'll get back to this Silverado in a second. What is it about this show that makes it so special it's worth driving 1,400 miles to get to? My farthest one yet. Uh, other than Music City, uh, this is the farthest one yet. Uh, two years ago, I came to Daytona, camped out. But uh, when I heard it was down by Miami, I figured might as well come down here and hit up Key West and slay a couple more bucket list areas. So what do you do for a living that allows you the time off? I work at a shop called High Caliber Motorsports, and I'm a union laborer. Okay. So I work on the pipeline occasionally. Tell me about this truck. It's a complete. Is this Linex? What What is the material on the outside? Completely Linexed. Been Linexed for seven years now. So you've got. Not, it's not a tear graphic, but you do have a graphic in the Linex, which is really hard to pull off. Well, and you've done it. Yes. Yeah. We wanted to get the effect of basically the the green being torn off, as if it going down the road. It was something random I wanted to do. Shop the. Holman, the front half of the truck is green, and the back half is black, and right on the rear doors at a 45-degree angle is kind of a tear, does it look, but it's a more of an organic tear. Does it look like what he's trying to do? Was it cool? It actually was kind of cool. It no. didn't look dated. It didn't look 80s. It yeah. looked fairly modern for did a tear. Did it look like a, a dinosaur ripped it off? Yeah, it actually kind of did. It kind of looked very Jurassic Park-ish, that green and black, but the line between where the green met the black was really well defined. You know, you've seen where guys have tried to line X different colors together and it bleeds and it's it just the two colors kind of co-mingle. Yeah. This was really well done. thought I was crazy. We pulled it off. So it looks great to this day. How do they do that? Because like a normal paint job, you mask it, right? They've got all that fine line masking. You can't do that with line X. No. So we didn't know how to do the wire tape. So we actually painted where it comes together by hand. That's what? My fingers, yes. Yep. In between the green to the black, that was painted by hand. You're saying you painted on top of the Linex, or that is the, the, the pigment Linex in the Linex? Paint itself, yes. It's still sticking. <laughs> the Linex will outlast the truck. I hope so. It probably will, being I'm at almost 200,000 miles now as my daily. <laughs> no, this is your daily? This is my daily, unfortunately. Okay. And is this up on a Cognito lift? What is that? Cognito lift, 12 yeah. inch, 3 inch body. I got custom airbags in the back, sport all the way. I got bed slide in the back. It's got a lot of oddball stuff to it, train horns. But you daily this thing up on 40s? Yes. How does it ride? It rides like a Cadillac. Uh, I've got lockers into it now, um, running 488s, uh, Yukon. It actually drives like a Cadillac. It feels so comfortable going on the road with it. How's the, uh, is the truck tuned or stock? Bone stock motor. No kidding. Yeah, it's one of the legendary 5.3s. Still kicking. Oh, you've got a 5.3 in here. Sorry, I just assumed it was a Duramax this high up. I got it's, 13 miles of the gallon. I was going to say, I was going to guess it was under 10, but 13's not bad, 13, actually. Yeah, that's not bad. If I didn't have the 10 on it, I get 16. Okay. And whose 10 is this? This is uh, Tough Stuff. Tough Stuff, okay. Yes. Yeah, it's a uh, four-person alpha hard top fold out. And it's on top of a what kind of rack? custom rack set up and i got a full basket set up on top i got full lights all the way around i think there is 21 pods i got a full lighting unit all the way around do you normally camp or is this a one-off no I, I camp out everywhere as i go for the most part okay it's pretty rare i hit up a hotel cheaper this way well you, yeah you've got all the gear inside the uh because you've got 
a lot of guys will have this on, on top of a rack, but you've got a, it's not a snug top. What brand is this? Your shell. It is an A-R-E. A-R-E. Oh, yeah, yeah. I great brand. I the glass because I wanted something that was strong, being that I haven't weighed up on top. So without the glass, I figured it'd be stronger to support all the weight. How many nights have you sped up in this thing? I and by the way, it's like 10 feet off the ground. It is, actually. Yeah, 10 feet. Now I think I'm up to 45, I think. Nice. Yeah, 45 I'm up to. Okay. So at 10 feet, you're not going through a McDonald's drive through No, or Duncan's, unfortunately. <laughs> by the way, he's got this. Uh, is this your shower or yeah, restroom or both? Unit. That's a shower unit. Oh, he's got a full bed tray in the back here. Okay, so, so is this a cargo glide? No, bed slide. Bed Glide 1000. Bed Glide 1000. He's got all of his essentials on here. Water, fuel, toolbox, jack, everything on this bed slide. All Easily accessible. I've got all the fluids in case I break down. I can do my full oil change all the way to gear oil, transmission, transfer case. I try to bring anything because as long as I got it, hopefully I don't need it. And I like how your spare tire carrier on the back folds down. He's got a spare that is in the receiver and it just folds right down so the bed slide doesn't hit it. You've got almost a foot of clearance here. Yep, that was the plan. I'm hoping to put it inside at some point, but 40 inch tire is kind of hard to just put somewhere on a truck. Yeah. And I see you've also got Bill Steins under there. How do you like them? I love them. I wish they were resis like my old foxes, but they ride very comfortably though. I'm excited to see it in the daylight. Oh, I didn't even realize that's a hard top on your Alpha tent. Those are all the places I've been so far. Look at all those stickers. Delaware, I can't read them. It's dark out. Did you give him a Truck Show podcast sticker to stick on there since he's now sure been on the show? did. All right. Did. So are you one of the biggest trucks on the road in your area? I would, I would say that being a mobile daily that actually moves around, yeah, I, by far. Um, we build SEMA trucks at High Cobb Motorsports. We build everything, but when it comes to a daily... I, I'm the only thing up there this big. It's nice, but it's awkward. I think the cops got used to me, and uh, they usually just... So were you me. getting a lot of tickets in the beginning or no? No, shockingly, they usually just kind of follow behind me, take pictures, and then they just go around me. I think they just realize I'm just, just passing through or just behaving on the road, trying not to make annoyance myself. And were you up on uh, Toyos, Nittos? What are these? What, what? Furies. Furies. Furies, 40s. They're 1350s and 24s. How do you like the Furies? At first, I was nervous. Uh, I was running Toyos at one point, but, of course, they're pretty pricey. So when I switched from 35s to 40s, I was told by Furies. I got a set of four of them, and we got them dialed in there. I like them. They are run. they noisy? They are actually pretty smooth compared to Toyos. For noise-wise, uh, they actually wear very well. Uh, they are uh, balloon tires. After 120, she gets a little light, but right. they are very nice tires. I'm impressed by what they designed. Hold on a second. After 120, you shouldn't be going over 120 in this thing. Come on. Well, this truck is also the first truck in history to be part of a supercar rally race known as the Midnight Run. We raise money for St. Jude's. And it's usually supercar race. I You've got a 5.3. It's not supercharged. So how are you keeping up? All about the gears. <laughs> Interesting. What did you gear this with? Four, these are 488s. Okay. Full locker. Holman, is it is it legit? It's not possible, right? He's not going. With 488s, even on 40s, the 5.3 is not pushing 120. There's oh, no and way. There's no way he got 16 miles per gallon ever in the history of that truck. Yes, like he, not, not, not with a 5.3. He, five, three. he doesn't have his speedo calibrated or something. There's wonkiness. Nobody would be the opposite would, because he's got, he would say he was going slower than he is. Listen, whatever it is. No, but he regeared. So oh. you'd have to do the whole math on regearing mm, yeah. versus tire size, and I don't really feel like going through that. But I'm telling you, I haven't, I've never seen the truck. It's not getting 16 miles per gallon. 13 maybe, but it ain't going 120. No, there's no way it's doing 120. What are those tires speed rated at? I don't know, 65, 70 miles an hour? <laughs> Just, <laughs> yeah. 42s at one point and 35s when I first entered for the midnight run. Okay. Uh, top speed of that night was 136 miles an hour on a nine-inch lift. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord. There's downhill? I don't, I don't, it's with a 5.3 no, on a no nine-inch lift? With, 
No, on a this Silverado. This guy was awesome and super no, nice. No, no, I but believe like, he is. I, I don't I'm, know how I, his speedo was so off. I don't know how he's getting those numbers. I mean, that's like me saying, oh, I was driving out to Moab and I did 30 miles a gallon. 140 <laughs> miles per gallon or 140 <laughs> miles per hour in the 392 and I got 20 miles per gallon doing it. It's just not believable. Like maybe he is. Maybe he has the fish carburetor, or he added some of those like like eco pills in there, or something like that. And all of a sudden, he's got the world's most efficient small block. But like maybe if he's like, well, it's a six liter. I, I want to love him. Uh-huh. I, I I think he's because gr- I feel like he's kind of our people. He is, but he's fringe. He's fringe people. <laughs> yeah, he's the guy who <laughs> is he an edge case? <laughs> yeah, he's an edge case. Stock brakes. <laughs> Well, I had slotted and drilled. We went back to stock for now. I'm getting ready to figure out if I want to... Need a big wheelwood setup. The TX-6Rs. Something, yeah. Yeah. That's the only kind of downfall right now of this build is braking. I have to beware, but... Have you weighed it? Uh, as of how it sits, before I had left, I'm sitting at just about... What do you think he weighs? A thousand pounds with the performance he's claiming. <laughs> yeah, I mean, eighty-eight hundred pounds. Eighty-eight hundred, which yeah. is quite a bit for only a half done. So no this will be a word of advice. I'm a Willwood fan. I'm kind of a Willwood homer. I'm not going to lie. I had a dually. I had a 2008 None of this dually Chevy with a Duramax, with a roof rack, with everything you can bolt on it. I was up on a set of twenty fours, on forties, and I was at ten thousand one hundred pounds. And after the Willwoods, we trimmed the 60 to zero by 11 feet. 11 feet, 60 to zero with that truck. So that's a big deal. That is a big deal, yeah. I'm adding on right now with how I'm sitting. That's I'm probably adding. That's half a car length. It's still that's half a car length. It's, it's killing a person half as much. That's, <laughs> that's what it is. Half a car length. I killed the people in the back seat, but not the people oh. in the front seat as I rear end them. That's And let me guess. You have... Obviously, you're talking about your old Dually. Yeah. What was the fastest you ever got it up to? The Dually? Yeah. Mm, mm, low 90s. Did it have more? Oh, yeah. It didn't oh, have yeah. 120 miles per hour more, though. N- oh, no, no. Um, it would have done probably 105. Yeah. With way more power. Yeah. Oh, I was I was at six hundred thirty five horse to the wheels. Yeah, I, with water meth. Just saying, super tuned, big Garrett turbo. I got it. I got yeah. it. I'm just saying. Yeah, you had enough of that guy. Nice guy. No, I, I just I just I don't believe him. Mm-hmm. That's all. I haven't had enough. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to shorten his experience on the Truck Show podcast. I I love his storytelling, but I also know trucks really well, and it's just I've got the shenanigans. Light Shenanigans. going off in the back of my mind. So all you can hear is... No. No? No, it's just a warning light. It's flashing. This We're sorry. The number you have dialed no. is not in service no. at this time. Again, it's just... It's just Try again! No, it's just mm. the console. It's just got a flashing red well, light. Maybe it's a good time for me to mention that uh, parents with small children listening... No, not that no, also. No, no, no. This place blows. It would if you're doing 120 and 8,800 pound half ton. So what you're saying is... That ain't true! That's not true! So get your facts straight. I'm not saying it like that. <laughs> I'm not yelling at the kid. So what you're know. saying is... You're not wrong. You're just maybe less than right. I mean, that's accurate, mm-hmm. I think. What Really what you're saying is... You're a lying sack of s***. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I just think his gauges are off. That's I'm, all. That's all I'm saying. You're saying... You get nothing. You mm-hmm. lose Good day, sir. No, no, not mm. not that either. Just I'm just saying that he might be being fed false information from his gauges. That's Got that's it. it. Mm. So then, Holman, I rolled up on a dude that had a TRX on slicks, and I said, "What? He's parked in the diesel shop booth." Mm. And I was rapping with Enrique, who owns the diesel shop down there in South Florida. And they're like the go-to guys for diesels. And I say, what's a TRX doing here? I thought, oh, no, please don't tell me it's diesel swap. That would be ridiculous. It wasn't. But at one time, it was the fastest TRX. It's not anymore. Steve Ripa apparently has it with a supercharged twin turbo. That's for another story. Uh, you know what I've... Yeah, okay. Yep. But Just... this guy was rad, and I had to talk to him. Lighting from Truck Show Podcast. What's your name? Ray Valdez. 
Nice to meet you. So I hear that this TRX is yours. Yes, sir. Tell me about it. It's a 21 TRX. Um, Sounds like I'm in the middle of Mardi Gras, doesn't it? What? <laughs> Ported blower, upper pulley, lower pulley, injectors, headers. Nitrous? A little bit of nitrous. Yeah, nitrous outlet. Got a 250 shot on it right now. Okay. Yeah. Now, I'm told that this is currently the fastest TRX in the country. Is that true? Because there's a couple of guys all vying for that title right now. No, actually, uh, the fastest ones right now is a Ripper Tune. They just got it about two weekends ago. Ah, okay, yeah, okay. Turbo setup. Yes. Badass truck, you know. So are you gonna? You trying to beat it? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We're coming for them, brother. Yeah. You know, we just we got the crazy weather down here, you know. So like, I'm running in 1800 DA, 2000 DA. So we're gonna try to do some traveling and get some of that cool air, you know, cool air. And, yeah, because uh, the humidity yeah. crowds out all the oxygen. Yeah. Then you got the high temps. Yeah. yeah, you're you're working. You're starting at a deficit. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna. You know, we made a couple little changes now, and uh, we're going to get back on the horse, you know? Okay. So we were ironing out some issues I had with the nitrous. So uh, we had a bad ground issue, and then that fried up my nitrous controller. So since January, every time I've gone to the track, we've been like, ish, you know, we just figured it all out. Okay. And uh, so now we're going to get back on the horse and, you know, chase now, some good weather. stock internals? Stock internals, yeah. Built really? trans. I, I broke the trans last year in January. Uh, actually in Orlando Speed World broke the e-drum so it has a billet parts in it but it's still a factory trans just you know built a little bit stronger okay um, simple speed and trans did that still stock motor and we finally got to dyno it uh, last week before uh, streetcar takeover and she made 1147 1229 foot pounds of torque on the 250 to the wheels to the wheel on the 35s not even on the slicks because uh, when we first got the truck I've always dynoed it on the stock tires so the big big 35s they, they take a lot of power so I wanted to make sure everything was still fine we threw the 35s back on and made 830 blower only and picked up 311 on a 250 pill so super excited about holy that. man yeah now. tell me about the tire setup it's like so you're running hoosiers yep hoosiers right? 325 45 18 it's kind of the standard setup out everyone's running pretty much it's like the biggest tire we can find you know so the trx with the brakes the issue is we can't put a 17 inch wheel because not i would have ran a 17 inch wheel you know but 18s this is the biggest tire i can find and although will wood Oh, I hope I'm not spoiling anything. Will Wood's working on a kit for this so you can fit a 17. Huh, sign me up. <laughs> yeah, I think it's their Aero DM kit. You'll have to call Mike Hamrick. Hey, Mike, are you listening? This is a guy who wants your 17-inch uh, Aero DM kit. Yeah, I'm actually waiting on Black Ops. Uh, Ched is the guy's name. Actually, they're a Florida company as well. They're working with Swift Springs. We're supposedly having the first set of lowering springs made for the TRX. So... That's going to be... I uh, would, uh, if, if they don't come through, knock on the door of Ibach. Ibach? Okay. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for anybody. We're willing to do... They're whatever. aware now of the situation. I had a yeah. conversation with their marketing director and said, yeah, you guys need there's to know that there's a lot of guys. Yeah. There are more TRXs, I think, on drag strips than in the desert. Correct. I, I, I think so, you know. it's uh, You don't have to wash the truck as much after you're done drag <laughs> racing, you know. Uh, you go mudding, you know, that's a good three, four hour, you know, washing process. You got to really love it. And I'm in Miami. There's nowhere to go off roading over here. You know, I right. get that all the time. Like, oh, you got the wrong, you know, tool for the, you know, listen, man. I was like, if I had a desert to go pre-run in, I'd be doing that. But I'm surprised that you don't have the Whipple three liter blower on here. Well, you know, I have a, a broken heart when it comes to that, that touchy subject. Oh, so really? What happened? I was the first one to officially order the three liter Whipple. The first one. TRX. Like the day they were like, hey, we're doing this, I called them up. I'm like, hey, I'm the guy. They give me a three liter. I, I, at the time, I was the fastest. I was like, we're going to keep that. They send me that three liter. And they're like, okay, you know, put the order in and then you're going to be like the first one to get it. And it's going to be like three or four months. And that just, just became the worst ordeal ever. Like every two, three weeks, it was, oh, two more weeks, three more weeks. We're sending you a shipping. And then, oh, the container, it's stuck on the port. And then the powder coating. And it was just a bunch of stories. And then finally in December, I just told them, you know what? I don't even want the damn thing no more. Like, forget it. So Got I just it. filled up. I said, more nitrous, man. So no Whipple truck has gone faster than me yet, all right? Yeah. And we're, you know. By the way, that's a great supercharger. Yeah, yeah. It is a great yeah. supercharger. It's, a, it's ported by Kong. She makes 830 blower only. I got 16,000 miles on the ported blower. And we thought, you know, she was maybe a little tired or something. I've, I've, I've at least 100 bottles of nitrous have gone through this thing. This is my race car. Oh, really? Okay, this is, is it. A, is it a daily as well or no? A hundred 
bottles of nitrous have gone through that engine. You haven't even had 100 bottles of uh, Metamucil. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Now you're just getting up in age and regularity is an issue. I don't even know what that means. You will. No, no, no. It used to be my daily, and then you know how that goes. So now I got the new daily for the daily. But uh, she, What's the new daily? I got to know. Uh, 22 F450. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I, I was going to do the, I was going to tow it. I, when I broke the transmission in Orlando, that was when I decided, okay, I need a daily because I was four and a half, four hours from my house. I had a broken transmission and I had a truck and a trailer to get home and a broken truck. Ouch. So I was like, okay, you know, we're going to have to figure something out. And uh, thank God, Sipple, uh, John Sipple, he was out there. They, I never had met him. First time I met the guy. Some guys in the Hellcat community, they're like, hey, go over to this guy's trailer, knock on his door. He's, He's good- like what, Mr. Hellcat? He does uh, all the uh, transmissions, like he does uh, performance transmissions. Okay. He trans out of North Carolina or South Carolina. In the Carolinas, okay? <laughs> Don't kill me on that, John. Sorry. And um, I went over to his trailer. And he's like, look, I'm going to check something out. You know, we might be able to get you on the road. We might not. He put the, com- the truck on the computer. He's like, all right, kid. Good news is what broke is broke. But you do have first, third, fifth, and seventh. So oh, he's so like, you, you can limp it. He's like, hey, if you drive to the gas station and you feel comfortable, he's like, you can drive this home. So I literally drove to the gas station. And I'm like, hey, I just, as long as I change the gears and skip the gears, I'll get there, you know? Okay. So... I drove my three and a half hour ride, seventh gear, cruise control, 2,000 miles, you know, 2,000 RPM, made it back home, no problem. And then I put the truck on a flatbed, sent it to Sipple. You know, he was a nice guy. He didn't have to do that. And he gave me the full blown billet stuff, you know, converter. She's ready for war. He's like, you're never going to break this one. So now, you know, I got the built motor at home. Oh, so you got a build motor that's going to go in oh, this yeah. now. Yeah, okay. fully built 411 MMX, uh, ported heads, big cam. We're going to keep stock blower, 500 shot of nitrous. We're just up in the nitrous. It's a 500 shot of yeah. nitrous. 500 shot of nitrous. You're going to dance a little bit, you know? So and what happens? I, I, I got to know. You're going down the track. Where do you squeeze? I actually have it on a timer base setup right now. So okay. I have it on a one and a half second timer. So as I leave, it starts at zero. And then in one and a half seconds, I get the full 250. And then it's just hold on. And it's all pedal activated, safety switches and all that stuff. Now, all wheel drive all the time. All wheels, yep. Right. It's going to go straight as an arrow unless something breaks. Right. Um, I've done one four, six, 60 foot at 6,331 pounds with me in it. A lot of guys, here's the deal. This is the real tricky part. Everyone claims weight, but no one's been on a scale. Okay. Like the last one that went uh, like a nine, seven, nine, six. Those guys said they were 6,300 pounds. That's hard to believe. Okay, they got no bumpers, no exhaust, you know. This, I just took out uh, the passenger seat. It's in there now, but I took out the passenger seat for the last event to weigh it. And with me in the truck, I got it down to 6,180. So there's there's potential there, you know. I feel like if I could break into the 5,000s, 5,999. And that's my recipe to get the record back stock motor. Okay. Because power-wise, I believe we're there. I just got to bring in the nitrous a little bit earlier and uh, let her eat. Who did the tuning? DSM Lights. Okay. I've been with him. He's uh, down in South Florida. I reached out to a couple other big name guys and uh, they're, they're just kind of busy and I, I, I know the type of guy I am. All right. I need that track support. You know, I'm calling 10 times a day. I call you when I get to the track. I'm sending 10 logs. You know, like I, I need I need my, uh, my my time, you know, so I went with my local tuner and 22,000 miles original motor bombing it with a 250 and she's to get holding together so he knows what he's doing you know nice, that's nice. my man what do you got here this is our nitrous controller right here this is what sets up all the fun you know we've got different type of ramps i believe since i was on the dyno last this is a yeah this is rpm base you see it coming in you know that's how i got the nitrous coming in when it goes all the way to the top that's you know full 200 so right here i don't got it spraying until 5,000 rpm the whole 250. that's all the stuff we get to play with at the track you know we bring it in earlier so and this uh, and this red button down here this red button oh yep. this is the fun button right that's here. that's the purge button. oh nice <laughs> yeah big purge button fun right button here. yeah so i got them out coming out through the vents right here you know yeah i saw that in the I, gills yeah i used to have it coming out the hood right but i hated how it looked when the hood was up so if you look at any of the pictures ever in this truck since the day I got it, no pictures with the hood up because I hated how, like, you know, it just looked messy, you know, it looked like a scrambled egg. So I just took it to my boy and I said, hey, we got to make, we got to clean this up. I want to show the people what they're looking at, you know, because people are like, oh, you're hiding a big giant motor, man. This thing came from Dodge like that, man. Just a little bit of nitrous. That's all. I'm on a stock fuel system still. Really? Yeah. 
boost the pump. That's it, man. I'm from Hialeah, baby. We, we know. I love the fact that you're kicking their asses <laughs> and it's so close to stock. Yeah. Like, my game plan was I knew I wasn't going to race this forever, right? Like, my wife is like, dude, you're, you're like, you're, are you retarded? Like, well, let's go get a race car. You know, you'll be more competitive. Right. But I had a 2019. I love the fact that your wife is clowning you. Yeah, because she's like, she understands. She's like, okay, this is a tank. I'm bringing Because when I ran heavyweight last year in, in a Modern Street Hemi shootout, I went farther in the heavyweight class, which is like the all out, you know, 2,000 horsepower cars versus when I went like index racing, you know, because those guys are on the money. The all out stuff is like, you know, you got to bring it. And I went farther, you know, I was like, you know, I, like fourth place, I think, last year in that. And I was like, man, this was the big tank. If I eventually, I'm gonna put this into something lighter. If I, if I, the guy that built this mo or my other motor, he told me in a, in a Mustang box body, you know, set up right. He's like, dude, that's a seven second ride with AC. You know, I'm like, damn, I'm over here struggling to run a, a low nine. You know, yeah. so the weight is a big deal. But it's a, it is. It's a tank. It's a six thousand yeah. pound truck. But also, it's something different. You know, and I started the the the, the pole was low. You know, like. When I had the Hellcat, I wanted to go fast, but everybody already went fast. I got this in January of 19 to 21. I'm like, oh, I could be the fastest quick. So on the big OEM tires, completely stock, lower pulley, 200 shot of nitrous, injectors. I went 1060 on the, on the factory tires. Like literally could have did that in a day's time, you know, just throw a lower pulley on there. Yeah. And that was about the funnest trucks I ever had. I was with the truck because, I mean, it was just so much fun, big tires. And I got the slicks, and you know we started really eating away. But we've got the uh, the diesel drag truck over here yeah. making some noise in the background. What's your zero to sixty time right now? So the fastest measured sixty, uh, two point four, but that was like on a nine eighty pass, nine eighty four pass. Okay. So I've been nine seventy with a way better sixty foot. So I think she's around two oh two two measured on the draggy. I've been two point four. And then the funny thing with the TRX, this thing has so much lift, you know, so much suspension travel. When I put the draggy in the front of the truck, it'll always not verify it because it says that there's a slope. Oh. <laughs> so now the cheat code is I throw the draggy in the back since the front doesn't lift so much. Ah. And then it gets me the verified passes. So the fastest verified has been a 2.4. Okay. You know, 0 to 60. But we know we've been faster on the street. That's still fast. Yeah. Did you understand what he was talking about there? So for those of you that don't know what a draggy is, it's a little GPS device about the size of, uh, I don't know, pack of cards. And it's got a magnet on the bottom of it. Normally, you just put it on your dashboard or somewhere, and it has to hit the sky, so it has GPS. It's got an accelerometer inside, and it just measures your 0 to 60, and you clock it. You record it to your phone, etc. Well, so he's launching so hard that the truck tips back. It squats. It now can't see the sky properly, and it invalidates the run. So he had to move the device to the back. So it would always see the sky. All right, what's your Instagram so we can uh, keep track of the truck as you go for the record again? 305 TRX. Okay. At 305 TRX. Yeah. She's so you're gonna you're gonna steal the record from Steve Ripa. We're gonna steal it back from Steve Ripa. All right. She's been 970 at 140 on a 200 shot. We upped it up to a 250. We're gonna let the nitrous come in a little earlier. We're taking the exhaust off, taking out some seats, and <laughs> but we're coming back for them. And we're gonna do it, you know, like them in the good air. Nice. All right, we're gonna be rooting for you. Thank you, boss. At 305 TRX. Yes, sir. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Right on. Pleasure. Yeah. All right, so what do you think of my man Ray with a TRX? I like it. It's nice to see uh, people really taking those things to the edge because uh, that guy is literally about, oh, I'd say uh, three quarters to a horsepower away from blowing that whole thing up to smithereens. He don't care. I also like how he's like, oh, I had the, the whip on order, but I'm doing all this on the stock blower, and I'm still slaying people. It's like, doing the Lord's work, dude. Dude, he's going for a 500 shot of nitrous. Yeah, that's a lot. 500 horsepower. That's a lot. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot. That's, I mean, it's going to be interesting um, to see when his piston meets the asphalt, because they will meet at some point. And my last recording from Florida Truck Meet is checking in again with Jordan at Trucks Gone Wild. All right, so we're out of the tug of war, as you can hear in the background. There's a uh, Ram 2500, and it's about 10 feet off the ground, and then there's a Chevy, and they're back to back, and they're pulling each other. Jordan, what is happening out here? What, what goes on in Florida? I don't know, just straight carnage. We just hook up the biggest trucks to the biggest trucks. Pull them back and forth, see if something breaks, and 
By God, it looks good. <laughs> so there's not really a winner. They're just kind of like they pull each other back and forth and it's back like, and forth. It's like WWE. You just you enjoy the show. <laughs> there you go. So this one is uh, stars and stripes. He's got CO2 that he's blowing out of the bottom. He's it's about 15 feet tall from to, ground to top. He's creating his own smoke show here. Yep, yep. So these are giant mud trucks. Oh, he's pulling the other one. The Chevy is he pulling the ram. Oh the my gosh. Into the dirt. It got the red light and he kept going. Good Lord. <laughs> Bunch of rednecks, I tell you. Oh my gosh, this doesn't <laughs> exist where I'm from, my I friend. Know. And I'm sad about it. I've identified at least four drops in the last 60 seconds of the truck show. <laughs> The thing is, we don't have mud. Well, that's not true. This I was year, about to say, this year we have mud. mud. This year we have mud. But the problem is, it's in all the places that we can't. You know, it's like it's in Santa Monica and, yeah, it, and it's yeah. in Malibu There's where a we bunch can't. Of needles floating in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> needles floating. In it. That's sadly true. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Do they declare a winner at the end of this? Because you've got all these matchups. So, in a little sense of the ways, yes, there is some trucks that uh, go against each other for money or bets or side bets, stuff like that. For, for the most part, it's exhibition, just going out there, having fun, pulling each other back and forth, put on a good show. Um, but there are some guys in the pits that actually want to go after each other, so they, uh, they do put some money down here and there. So then how do they decide it? Because if you just stand on your brakes then it's up to him to drag you. At what point does he let off the brakes? And you're like, I don't really understand the dance. So there is a spotter in the passenger seat that is watching, and there is uh, some guys in the ground that tell him when to stop, when to go. So this event that you have, I don't know, there's 1,500, 2,500 people out here? Quite a few? Yeah, I'd say there's a good bit out here. Yeah, and it's free. Yeah, all free. So you paid for this event to go off and it's yep. free to the community. Yep, we are just, we wanted to give something for the people to come see and get the local crowd out. We're working on, you know, capitalizing on it in some other ways, but for the first year, we just wanted to get it done. So I was worried about the surface because it's asphalt and with these big tires turning, we thought that the asphalt was gonna get torn up. So we thought maybe that it would get torn up and then we'd have to put down concrete, but it's holding up quite well. So that's one thing we don't have to have to deal with now. Well, this is an amazing event. Thank you for putting it on. I think the crowd is having a great time. Uh, Trucks Gone Wild staff has been very accommodating and informative. And uh, you've been I'm pretty pretty cool yourself, you know. You've been camping out with us, bringing us some beer. You brought me food. Man, you I, saved me there. Because I, I knew you were going to die. Yep. You, you've been working all day without eating. Yeah, yeah. I work myself to the bone sometimes. But you know what? The the event has been awesome. Uh, the crowd has been having a great time. The showing of trucks is phenomenal. Uh, you got a great mix of lifted and lowered. I mean, it's obviously heavy on the lifted side, but yep. that's how it's advertised. Yep. Yep. But I, I found there was a 1960 Ford F550 that was started its life as a single cab short bed. It was stretched to a dual cab long bed with a 24 valve Cummins and it was on the ground and it was gorgeous. I shot some video of it, I'll post it. That was a great truck. So you have, and there was a F-150 on the ground. Um, it was out on the, the front straight. Really cool to see. Just anyway, a, a great mix of trucks out here. So yeah, congrats. I'm really, I'm really trying to dive into the lowered side. I know that's a different crowd than the lifted guys. There's uh, always a little bit of animosity between those two worlds, but Either way, it's all the same common, you know, thing between each other. We all like custom stuff. You know, we all like getting together and having. You gotta, you gotta love a truck. A truck is a truck. You know what I mean? There's yeah. new, like behind us. There are some beaters back here in the oh, tug of yeah. war. Beaters, but they're winning. I love it when the guy comes from behind. You expect that it's just a pile of crap, and he tugs the, you know, that twenty you never twenty know. It three could truck be a sleeper, and it just pulls somebody all the way to Timbuktu. That's exactly <laughs> right. All yes, right. sir. Ladies and gentlemen, Truck Show Podcast at Florida Truck Meet. That's how we do. Nephew. <laughs> Thank you to uh, Jordan and Patrick for having me out there. Really appreciate it. They're uh, super accommodating. You, uh, you up for some news, Mr. Holman? Oh, my God. There's so much news. What's, What's new, new in trucks? trucks? We need to know. What's new in trucks? We need to know. What's new in trucks? We need to know. Lifted, lowered, and everything in between. What's happening in the world of trucks? Ah! Let that soak in. Hey, uh, Lightning, did you hear? I don't watch the news because I'm a kid. Go ahead, what you got? 
For you Toyota Tacoma fans out there, uh, Toyota continues to troll the uh, new Tacoma pickup truck on their Instagram page. So if you want to uh, see what they're up to, uh, the latest drop includes the Trail Hunter, which uh, shows the rear three-quarter view with an ARB rear bumper from the factory, as well as a Trail Hunter badge on the uh, on the tailgate. And if the spy photos uh, are accurate, looks like it also come with a uh, roof rack. The all-new 2024 Toyota Tacoma Trail Hunter should be, uh, I believe, uh, some more information in May about the actual product that uh, <clears throat> might know more soon thing, something. That's all I'm going to tell you. So what you're saying is it's under... Embargo. For now, it's embargoed, although uh, there's a lot we can glean from these images, uh, like the headlights have a little illuminated trail hunter in there. Now, TRD Pro is more for the go-fast desert pre-runner crowd. Trail hunter is supposed to be for the overlanding crowd. So the fact that they've uh, partnered with ARB on uh, bumpers is uh, is telling. ARB is an Australian company that uh, makes some of the best overlanding products in the world, and uh, Toyota has not uh, missed that cliff note. They are, uh, looks like they're actively... Uh, in a relationship with ARB, so we'll we'll know more soon. But uh, it looks it looks pretty sweet so far. I mean, it kind of looks like a Tacoma. Yeah. If you mix the current Tacoma and the new Tundra, that's what the new Tacoma looks like. I will say that on the groups because I'm in a few of them. Man, they're excited. They their panties are in a bunch. Yeah, because they haven't had a new truck since 2005. Yeah, they know it. Yeah, <laughs> they know it. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what the truck offers. I know there's some other. There was a TRD Pro tailgate shot. And it had the iForce Max badging on it, which tells you that the hybrid is coming as well, because that's uh, similar to what is in the Tundra, but I'm guessing it'll be the four-cylinder version, not the six-cylinder version. So so I know a dude has a uh, TRD Pro hybrid. Don't you mean the uh, TRD Bro? Because it says TRD Pro in giant letters on the uh, airbag cover on the passenger side? A little bit. He a had, little loud. He that's a little a, loud. Uh, so, so, so get this. He had a CAN bus error. And it locked his gas door shut. That's that's dumb. Isn't that the craziest why, thing? Why would you do things like that? You shouldn't. That's like, you know, the Mercedes and what was it, the Tesla. Some of them had like the door handle issues. Yeah. It's like, no, you're you're done. They, they've they removed the cable, apparently. It's a push button. Like oh, so many of the modern cars, you know, Mercedes, you push the button electronically, it pops it out. Toyota did that, apparently. I haven't seen it with my eyes, but he goes, I was locked out of my gas door. I had to go under inside the the, uh, the fender well and find the the emergency pull handle. That's... that's he was just, locked out it's from, not, his, from filling gas. It's not right. It's not right. Hey, Lightning, did you hear? Nope. Chevrolet has announced that the uh, new Silverado ZR2 is now available with the 3-liter diesel. Before, it was only available with a 6.2-liter V8. And uh, now, for those of you who want to have a performance-oriented suspension, you can get it with the uh, diesel as well. That's great news. Man, I should get back on that whole thing about making a Derringer tuner for that truck. Gee, I wonder why. Hmm. Because it's the only diesel truck that will be around soon. Hey, uh, Lightning, did you hear? Wait a minute. Did you hear what Holman just said? It's the only diesel truck that'll be around soon. At oh, because light the, duty. Because the eco diesel's going the eco away. Diesel's gone. The yeah. Ford's gone. Oof. Name another light duty diesel that's out there. I can no. Well, not in this country, but well, I can get I'm, the. I'm the, not talking. I don't live in another island. country. Right. And doesn't matter. <sighs> it, uh, no, I have not heard. No. Uh, Chevrolet has also announced that the first ever Chevrolet Silverado HD ZR2 is coming to market. Yes, 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 yes. Designed to uh, tow, haul, and tackle the trails, the new Chevrolet Silverado HD ZR2 gets the race-proven Multimatic DSSV dampers, a factory lift, and uh, a lot more for Chevy's heavy-duty off-road pickup truck. So That is outstanding. So now the uh, ZR2 family is complete. You can get an HD ZR2, you can get a Colorado ZR2, and you get a light-duty 1500 ZR2, but best of all, the Silverado HD ZR2 will also have a Bison variant, which means that all the AEV goodies and bumpers and whatnot, they'll be on the uh, on the heavy duty as well. Holman, have you been in a new 2024 HD? Uh, I have not. I just picked one up from a customer last night. Drove to the high desert, picked one up. 
According to this customer, there are only two Sierra Denali 3500 Ultimates in the state of California. I picked one up last night, when you're hearing this, a few days ago, and it is the quietest truck I've been in. I accidentally did 98 miles an hour without knowing it three times because there is so much freaking power. It's over 900 pound-feet of torque stock 470 horsepower except for this one thing i love the truck what do you think that thing is i have no idea the steering wheel and the instrument cluster are not centered it's been like that for like the last four years it's worse what it's worse what do you mean it's worse the center stack is so wide they pushed the your instrument cluster to the left. It's weird. It's so it's, weird. It's the same. It's it's, it's so, the same dash that they debuted last year. I'm telling you that I haven't been in one and I couldn't get over it. And then I sent a picture to the customer. He goes, "I didn't notice it. I hope you didn't ruin my truck for me." He probably did. Uh, I don't. It is so bizarre and awkward feeling I'd have i to couldn't see get it. over it and i drove it for an hour in traffic last night i would have to uh, i would have to see that uh going back to the zr2 family which is the version that's not out yet how about this exclusively in a 2500 crew cab configuration with the standard 6.6 liter gas or 6.6 liter duramax the hd zr2 and hd zr2 bison will uh come with all sorts of uh goodies how about this Max payload for HD ZR2 is 3,397 pounds. Max trailering is 18,500 pounds with the Duramax. And these are some things that you're going to get with it. You get a ZR2 family front grille. You get unique wheel opening moldings featuring integrated mudguards. ZR2 badging on the grille bar and high stance, further strengthening the HD ZR2's image, according to Chevy. Both trucks now have a flow tie. The suspension gets a 1.5 inch lift front and rear. And in addition to the Multimatic DSSV dampers, you get specific front upper and lower control arms and steering knuckles, larger steel transfer case skid plates and a front aluminum skid plate, a rear e-locker, and check this out, 35-inch tires from the factory on HD. Something GM hasn't done yet. Wow. That truck looks absolutely freaking burly. If you combine this 24 that I was in Mm -hmm. last night with... The ZR2 and or Bison package, that is the dopest truck on the road. I'm telling you, this is the smoothest shift. I bet. Listen, you know I spent thousands of miles in our 20 Denali. This was better. This was my God. It just got up to. Well, I hope it rides better. Z- because zero to sixty was just F. Chevy hasn't done a great job of making that IFS HD truck ride well. It didn't chatter, so our 20 chattered a little mm-hmm. bit. Right in the steering, you can feel it. I didn't, I didn't, you know, I wasn't going to really rough roads. I was on the highway, albeit, but like, man, I, I was really impressed. So there's also a new off-road mode, which incorporates learnings from the ZR2 Colorado and Silverado. Uh, when engaged, it adjusts various vehicle calibrations, such as the brakes, traction control, stability control, uh, optimizing them for uh, trail driving. And uh, in addition, off-road mode alters the throttle progression and trans shifts, and the locking rear axle does not have a speed limitation, which you got to love. The AV collaboration basically takes all the goodness of the HD ZR2, adds exclusive gloss black 18-inch AV wheels, distinctive uh, cut high-approach stamp steel front bumpers with integrated recovery points and winch provisions, unique stamp steel cut rear bumper with recovery points, tough stamp steel underbody skid plates for the front of the vehicle, steering rack, exhaust, and transfer case, and then Bison models also receive unique exterior badging uh, and other cues, including the AV logo on the front seat and head restraints. And then, of course, uh, all of the uh, normal 2024 upgrades are going to also uh, be applied to the HD ZR2 and HD ZR2 Bison, things like the DuraBed cargo box, uh, the 120-volt power outlet, and the available six-position multi-flex tailgate. So uh, that truck is probably going to be really, 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 really expensive. What do you think that the sticker, and I know because he left it in the glove box, the truck when I picked it up last night was... 93. Last night when I picked it up, it had uh, 1,553 miles on it. The guy put a lot of miles on it in two weeks. He owns a junkyard, apparently. Super cool. Young dude, 26-year-old, owns this truck. 
$99,000. Yeah, I believe it. Nine, so, it's the uh, Sierra Denali Ultimate. And these, this, so the, HDZR2 will be over 100 So The Bison. Anyway. Yeah, I, I believe that. A couple things that disappointed me about this truck, and I don't know if it's an option. He said this was optioned out. You couldn't get any higher. It doesn't have a, um, a panoramic roof. It's got a little tiny sunroof. What's up with that? I don't think you can get a panoramic on the big Chevys. Yeah, that was weird. You can get it on all the Rams um, and the Fords, but not on the Chevy. That was a, that was a little bit of a letdown. And then the other thing that I didn't like was that you cannot put it in any gear unless what? The door is closed. Your seatbelt is fastened. Mm-hmm. There you go. Wear your seatbelt, kids. That's not... I, I, no, no that's, that was not okay. I was just moving it from parking spot to parking spot. Well, Got to put my seatbelt on. You have to do on. it safely next time. Hey, Lightning, did you hear? No. Nope. Uh, additional GM news, the uh, 24 Silverado with the 2.7 liter high output four cylinder, uh, gets a new name. It's going to be called Turbo Max. Turbo Max. Next story. Uh, the 6.2 liter V8 will now have new active dual exhaust. Oh, that's cool. Which is pretty cool. Because it'll get loud, hopefully. And, and then, uh, you'll be able to get a blackout package for the Silverado lineup. Um, and the Silverado 1500 High Country Midnight Edition is also going to be available. So, sounds like they're, uh, you know, they didn't leave the, uh, the lineup alone. Looks like there's some meaningful changes for, uh, for 23, which is pretty cool. Hey, Lighting, did you hear? No. Nope. Uh, by the way, when I was in uh, Moab, I got to sit in the uh, brand new 2024 Wrangler. They had the uh, Rubicon in both a 4xe and a 392. Damn, that's nice. Which one has better acceleration? I a 392. Do, okay, okay. By how much? But w- a lot. Oh, really? Yeah, it's not close. Probably okay. a couple seconds. Because I was you. You borrowed the 4xe. Yeah. And we were driving around, and I was a fairly impressed. Four by e Grand Cherokee is faster than the V8, the 57. But not. But a Wrangler is not faster than the 62. Okay. Now, uh, the thing that I was really impressed with was the new instrument cluster with that giant 12-inch screen. Uh, really well integrated. Just looked awesome. And I kind of like the new grill. A lot of people are like, oh, it looks like a Renegade. I don't get it. Yeah, because like, it uh, it's it's narrower, right? Uh, squattier. squattier. Not narrow. It's just not as tall. So left to right, I felt like same. it was- it's identical. It, oh, it is. Yeah. It's just the, not as tall. Oh. I uh, I love it. I had a chance to spend time with uh, our friend uh, Jim Morrison and Mark Allen and- We'll have Mark on the next show, but they uh, they resculpted the uh, the sport bar. There's now uh, side curtain airbags. There's power seats for the first time. They're all waterproof. We talked about this some of the last show, uh, but seeing it in person, the upgrades are very nice and not enough to make me be like, oh man, I wish I would have waited. But anybody's going to buy a 24 Wrangler, the 24 392, that's that's the business right there. That's that's the one to have. No, no, you should say that's the bees nass. No, I don't say things like that because oh. it's super weird. Hey, Lightning, did you hear? No. Nope. Uh, apparently, the uh, 2024 Ford Ranger, which shares a platform with the 2023 Ford Bronco, uh, might just be screwing up uh, Bronco production. So it sounds like right now, because the 2024 Ranger is coming online and being built at the same factory in uh, Dearborn as uh, the Bronco, sounds like uh, there are uh, a few uh, growing pains over there, and uh, the Bronco uh, output might be impacted. Hmm. I think we may have mentioned it in a previous show, but uh, the manual is going to be uh, dropped for a little while, and it sounds like the uh, the base uh, Bronco, the Everglades edition, and the manual option Broncos uh, will have production delays until the uh, Ranger is up at full swing. So mm. if you're uh, waiting on one of those, God, you, I mean, it's uh, really just might be if, waiting. If you're a, a Bronco fan, you're just getting pummeled. Hey, lighting, did you hear? What? No. Nope. Funny you should mention that because uh, the Jeep Wrangler outsold the Ford Bronco in uh, Q1 of 2023. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> that stings. But it wasn't a huge amount. So uh, Ford sold 32,430 Broncos, which is up uh, 37.6% from the same period last year. And the Jeep Wrangler, on the other hand, sold 37,971. So, I mean, 3,000 more is that's an accomplishment. 5,000 5, more? I thought you said 34. No, 32. Th- 32, 430 to 37, 971. Got it. I mean, that's still a pretty f- fair distance. Some manufacturers would be happy to sell 5,000 of something in sure. a quarter. Sure, Anyway, the uh, 4 by E, uh, according to Jeep, is uh, the... <laughs> this is funny. Accounted for 38% of total Jeep Wrangler sales in the first quarter of 2023. 
apparently making it and the Grand Cherokee 4xe the best-selling plug-in hybrid electric vehicles in America. No way. Yep. What? Yeah. What are the what's the competition? Do we know like everything that's plug-in hybrid? Priuses and Kia. Oh wait a minute. And I was, so I just in my own head. I heard like SUV or something. No. I, I heard these prerequisites of no. all plug-in hybrids. Placing number one and two, Wrangler 4xE and Grand Cherokee 4xE. That's pretty uh, That's pretty crazy. We have a 4xE in our driveway, and my wife absolutely loves it. So uh, I'm not surprised that uh, it continues to sell well. We have uh, really, really enjoyed it. She's had uh, about 7,000 miles on it now, haven't had one issue, and she plugs in every night, and she uh, drives all day on electricity, and sometimes she doesn't even hit gas by the time she gets home. So she went from filling up uh, once every uh, six days or so to filling up once every 20 days or so. Meanwhile, your 392 says... You can hear it sucking. Uh, yeah, that's that's absolutely true. Uh, the beauty is that I am carbon neutral, though, because of this. My, not, my not driveway. Really. No, yeah, really. absolutely. No. I've got a... And I got, if you count what comes out of your rectum... You're nowhere near That's, carbon neutral. I don't know why you went there. That's <laughs> very, very weird. I, I'm at, <laughs> at a loss of words. Hey, Lighting, did you hear? How about no? Nope. The uh, Tesla Cybertruck has been seen with new steel wheels uh, with various uh, test equipment duct taped to the outside. And it looks way even more uh, steampunk than the actual uh, drawings does, mostly because take a look the wheels look awful on it. <laughs> those those are uh, what kind they're, of wheels are those? Be like uh, like not welds? No, like what no, kind of none like of them? A, no, it, it looks like a Hyundai that lost a hubcap. Oh, it's yeah. horrible. That being said, Elon said that the uh, production is about to come online, and it feels like the future. Uh, what is let me let me let's check, the, I'm not check sure this out. Department. So I put in my hundred dollar deposit yeah. two years ago. Have you even got, do you was. ever get updates? That's what I was about to tell you. Not a single update. And yet I log into my quote unquote Tesla account, right? Because mm-hmm. it gives you one. Yeah. <clears throat> when you give me your hundred bucks. Yeah. There's nothing. It says nothing. Nothing. They just took your money, dude. Zero. If I want to know if if any yeah. of one anyone in our audience mm-hmm. Gave Tesla $100. Have you had a single update from Tesla? Is it just me? Did I log in wrong? Did I did I put in a password incorrectly? Like what happened? Or are they just ghosting everyone? They made a billion dollars or some ungodly number up front in like deposits. And there's no communique? What? No what? way. Wow. It's horrible. Hey, Lightning, did you hear? Oh, no. Oh, no. Nope, I did not. A recent study from IC Cars uh, is, was, took a look at used car prices, and obviously they're starting to trend down versus uh, last year when new cars were not available. But interestingly enough, uh, there are still a few hot models that uh, the demand are strong enough where the used market is actually higher than the uh, as-new sticker prices. And would you like to guess which vehicle? is more expensive used currently than new, according to IC Cars. Okay, more expensive. Oh, my God. Uh, I'm going to take a shot in the dark, a Ram 2500. But why would you go with that? that Seems odd. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't have a clue. The Ford Maverick. Oh. Oh, Really? The average Ford Maverick sells for $4,038 over new pricing on the used car market. That equates to a lightly used selling price of uh, thirty six grand. How? Why? Because there's there's no no uh, supply of dealers. So unfortunately, if you want to get one, you got to buy one used. And so because there's no supply, the demand is high, and the used ones get a little higher residual. So and it's still um, th- one of the cheapest vehicles on the road. I, would say I it's guess that's the why. best of all worlds. Apparently, wow. Hey, Lighting, did you hear? No. Nope. Interestingly enough, the uh, 2024 GMC Sierra AT4X will now have the diesel engine standard. And the gas-powered 6.2-liter V8 is available, but it's an option. Wow. That seems kind of odd. I don't know if they're trying to push up uh, diesel production or if they feel like the majority of people in that particular model like uh, the diesel better than the gas, especially for that overlanding crowd. But uh, for 2024, the uh, the diesel is going to be standard on that particular trim. 
I mean, that's a, such a pricey truck that I think the person who goes for that trim wants to max it. Let's so get the engine to match. I mean, you, you could be right for a change. Hey, Lightning, did you hear? No, God, please, no, no. Nope. So apparently uh, GM has reported that for the first three months of 2023 that it sold, guess how many Hummers? The new EV Hummers. Sure, sure, sure. 4,500. Is that your final answer? Yes. Two. Why? Explain, please. Uh, GM spokesperson uh, uh, clarified the record, saying that they were under a recall stop delivery, so uh, they halted production to fix the issue. Uh, production resumed on January 30th of this year, and then shipments uh, started happening at the end of Q1, so uh, Q2 sales should uh, should pick up. But it's uh, it's still a fun, clickbaity headline. Hey, Lightning, did you hear? No! Nope. Well, I don't think so. Remember when uh, we told you that uh, the Ford Lightning uh, got more expensive? Yes. Then remember we told you it got more expensive again? Yes. And then we did it again and realized we repeated the story. So it was twice. No, no, no. Two different times. No, no, no. I'm saying that we did it three times and then we realized that you had told us the story twice. That's okay. So it it went up twice. Right. Right. No, it went up three times now. This is the third. third Officially the third. Uh, the uh, base Lightning Pro now starts at uh, sixty-one eight sixty-nine. Friends over at uh, TFL Truck report that uh, after another price hike, the 2023 Ford F one hundred and fifty Lightning Pro now kicks off at sixty-one eight sixty-nine, which is a staggering twenty-one thousand eight hundred and ninety-five dollars more than the initial launch pricing back in May of twenty twenty-one. Uh, they go on to report that's not just the Pro either. Uh, that is the largest increase among the Lightning's trim, but the uh, mid-range Lariat jumps by fifteen hundred dollars and now starts at seventy-seven eight sixty-nine, including Ford's uh, eighteen hundred ninety-five dollar destination charge and the Platinum. Uh, now, uh, after its twelve hundred dollar jump, uh, starting MSRP is ninety-nine nine six nine. Wow, it's a lot of cheddar. I listen. They're forcing these EVs on people. And apparently there's enough, at least initial demand, where people want them, but there's not a huge amount of supply. But it's the, it's not sustainable if the whole automotive industry chases the higher prices on EVs. Just I just sit here and I'm, I worry about the future, my friend. <laughs> worry about all the lithium and cobalt and they're power doing a grids They're and, doing a really good job of suppressing that conversation, aren't mm, they? They sure are. In quotes, they. Whoever they are. Mm-hmm. To everyone, mm, those people. Uh, hey, Lightning, did you hear? No! Nope. What percentage of GMC Sierra HDs in quarter one consisted of only AT4 and Denali trims? Okay, I'm going to say... By the way, this goes back to you saying people who buy the trim want everything. Right, right? I'm going to say 70. 84%. Wow. So whichever guy said we need to AT4 and Denali everything. Yeah, he was the man. That dude is getting paid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hopefully paid, yes. Hey, Lightning, did you hear? No! Nope. Interestingly enough, uh, Rivian says it's on track to build 50,000 EVs this year. Uh, it delivered just under 8,000 vehicles in the first quarter of 2023. Will any of them have exciting interiors? Uh, I don't think the Rivian interiors. I like it way more than the Tesla in- interior. Sure, but I wasn't comparing it to the Tesla interior. The Tesla interior is I, I think the Rivian interior boring. By the way, I was in a three performance for the first time ever. Uh-huh. They are noisy as hell. So yes, and it was way boomy. Yes, and they ride like crap. All of those things yes. are true, and yet it threw off my equilibrium when the guy did a launch. Oh, dude, they're fast. Don't Damn, yeah, for sure they're fast. But sure. I, they, I couldn't believe I had an Uber pick me up at a three. I cannot believe how bad the rear seat ride was and how boomy and noisy it was inside. I was like, wow, this there's is no, awful. There's no sound deadening anywhere at all. No, you might as well put your head out the sunroof. All the wind noise. That's pretty much what it sounds like, yeah. except that's road no, noise. No, actually, you know what I was hearing? when I, I It was just tire noise. Just so much freaking tire noise. It's like you're riding on a set of Interco Super Swampers. Hey, Lightning, did you hear? No. Nope. 
So a while back, we talked about how you can no longer get the quad motor with the biggest battery for the Rivians. But now Rivian has officially added the performance dual motor option for the R1T, which can be paired with either the large pack or the max battery pack. What does that do for performance? So now the dual motor all-wheel drive is 600 horsepower. The performance dual motor all-wheel drive is 700 horsepower. And the quad motor all-wheel drive is 835 horsepower. That would be fun. And I'm sound- not going to lie. That would be fun. And it sounds like when you when you look at the matrix, a quad motor all-wheel drive with the large battery pack and 21-inch wheels will do 328 miles of range, while the performance dual motor with 21-inch wheels will do 400 miles of range. That compares to the dual motor all-wheel drive at 600 horsepower, which is the non-performance version. Uh, it tops out also with 21-inch wheels at 400 miles. 700 horsepower. Will it tank turn? Uh, they do not have tank turn because they were afraid people were going to spin themselves right on off a cliff. Is that true? Yep. What Off a cliff? Yeah, just spinning, doing tank turns, and then f- flying off, and not losing your bearings. And just Oh, got it. Just actually just getting dizzy. Bye. Well, no, they're afraid people would be doing it on the side like a, a shelf road or something. And like, hey, party trick. And then they, the liability of them driving themselves off of a ravine was not appealing. Will they keep it in the Hummer? Uh, I don't know that the Hummer has that particular feature. I thought it did. Oh, well, the, the Rivian, the Hummer's a three motor. The Rivian's a four motor. Four motor is what allows you to do that. Right. You're thinking of crab walk. I was thinking of crab walk. Thank you. Which yes. Completely different. Totally different. Not that, even close to being the same thing. Uh, it's like uh, super 3D driving. Feels like you're piloting a helicopter on the ground. That's the best way I can describe it. It's cool, but it's weird. All right, Lightning, did you hear? <laughs> You've got more? I the last one. No. No, I've not heard. Uh, for This is for the kids. We just had Easter, and uh, the Easter Bunny came. And uh, it's about to be summertime, and you like to go camping. So apparently you can now get a, a little teeny tiny rooftop tent for your kid's Power Wheels Jeep. <laughs> no, you can't. Yes, you can. Really? Uh, the uh, Adventure Rooftop Tent Manufacturer Roof Nest uh, <laughs> now has a kid-sized one, and it's called the Roof Nest Hatchling. <laughs> and uh, it's... Uh, the first ever rooftop tent designed just for kids. And you can... No, no, why are you buzzing that? Because, first off, a Power Wheels weighs like 10 pounds. It'll tip right over. The kid's going to no, get hurt. No, it's great. Measuring uh, 36 inches by 24 inches by no, 23 inches. No, no. It's a downsized version of uh, the rooftop the tent. The only way big truck. this works is if it has like legs no, that stretch listen, out. No, da- listen, if dad has a Jeep with a rooftop tent, yeah. why can't your Power Wheels have it? Because it doesn't weigh anything. It's going to tip over the kids getting How hurt. do you know that? I'm just saying. Listen, it can be mounted on children's sized battery powered vehicles. Mm. It's cool. Look at this. Let me see. That sounds dumb. Hang on, let me see here. Yeah, that's just as dumb as I thought it sounded. That was also April Fool's joke. Okay, that makes a little more sense. <laughs> I'm so, I was hoping you go along with it a little bit more. It was one of my favorite uh, April Fool's jokes. Uh, listen, no show here landed on April Fool's this year, so you guys are safe from our hijinks for at least another year. Yeah, another year because it's fallen on a Sunday. You don't. I mean, why yeah. would you pull? You nah. don't do it on a Sunday. That's stupid. Sunday. But man, in two years, you guys are screwed. <laughs> Holster, you ready for some uh, email? We have time for emails? Nope. <laughs> We're going to do them anyway. All right. You email? Yeah. I email. Do it. We email. That's right. Everybody email. Type it up. You email. Proofread. I email. Send it. We email. Click it. Everybody email. Nah, dude. This is the uh, longest show ever. The longest truck show podcast episode on record. Except it's not. No, it's not even close. All right, you got to hand those things out? You're just... Uh, there you, you got, go. Right. Read away. I think we just blew an entire HP printer cartridge yes, on all these did. emails. Damn. And this isn't even half the freaking Frontier Spotting ones we have. Uh, yeah. By the way, uh, do send us your Frontier Spotting email, uh, truckshowpodcast at gmail.com or lightning at truckshowpodcast.com. And uh, send us your photo of a Nissan Frontier taken from the cab of your truck. And make sure you include your shipping address so I can send you... A shiny Truck Show Podcast sticker. Subject line, end of last episode from Seth Anderson. Hey, guys. That ad for the TRX at the end of the last episode was hilarious. Thanks for the laugh, 
Seth from Chicago. I try to drop some nugs into the end of the episodes just uh, to keep you guys hanging on to the end. And, uh, well... Sometimes you do. That one was funny. All right, uh, we've got Trevor Nemiro uh, writes a Chevy Meteor. If GM makes something that's even comparably successful as the Raptor or TRX, I'll eat my shorts. I used to be a bow tie till I die kind of guy, but I think they just lost their soul after the bailout. I think the Meteor is going to be about as well adopted as their Chevy Blazer revival. Thanks, Trevor. Yeah, the Blazer was just a bad abomination. Yeah. My uh, my sister in law Tesro one before she bought her car, and she was like, "Yeah, this this thing drives like a tin can." Yeah, not that super impressive. Travis Bowles wrote into us. Here's a picture of a truck show podcast sticker on my toolbox. Save the second one for a random place in Michigan while I'm out fishing. Thanks for sending them for spotting the frontier in the wild. Keep up the awesome podcast. And that's uh, from Travis out in Plainwell, Michigan. All right, got one here from uh, our friend John Segal says, uh, Hey, Lighting Holman, this is your old pal John from the beautiful West Shores of Lake Tahoe. I was listening to you thank your sponsors at the beginning of the most recent show and heard you mentioning Bill Stein's. I'm loving my October purchase of my new-to-me 2020 Ram Rebel. As you can see, it's fairly loaded with the lumber rack, camper shell, deck, drawers, and tools. The truck drives so good. The spring rate and Bilstein shocks complement each other so well. Bilstein did a great job. With my old 2016 Ram EcoDiesel, the chassis would get upset with the bumps, potholes, and overall poor road quality here at North Lake Tahoe. With the 2020 Rebel and the Bilsteins, the chassis is never upset. This truck's nickname is Smooth Crew. Super happy with their product. Keep up the quality work, brothers. And that's from John. And uh, we had that truck. I had a, a Steel Spring Rebel for a year as part of uh, my job at Four Wheeler evaluating. And uh, that was one of the very few vehicles that I've had that my wife at the end of the loan said, we should think about buying that. Really? Yeah, she liked it that much. And I think that one was a was either 19 or I think it was a 20. That one was red, wasn't it? That one was Billet Silver. Billet Silver? I don't remember that truck. Only had it for a year. You rode in it. Why do I think it was red? What what red truck do you... Oh, I know the TRX was red. TRX was red. The Chevy uh, Colorado ZR2 that was, was red. red. Hmm. Yep. I don't recall you having a silver truck. My Nissan truck. Titan XD diesel was blue. Yeah. The Raptor was blue. The older uh, second gen Raptor was white. Um, I'm trying to think of what vehicles I've had. I just don't remember you owning a silver truck. Huh. Yeah. Strange. Only for a year. Podshed name, subject line from Mike Rich. I know I'm late to the naming game, but how about this for the Podshed? The Chunker Bunker. <laughs> I think I'll pass it on fits that. nicely <laughs> since you guys barely fit in it. Ha ha, just kidding. Thanks for the great show, guys. Bastard. Yep. Uh, I got this one from Creighton Burroughs. Says, hi, guys, from Tier Spotting at the San Jose Airport car rental. And uh, he says, I travel often for work and had a new experience last week. I got to drive and experience the Jeep Wrangler 4xe. This was my first EV endeavor, and I was pretty impressed by the performance and drivability in hybrid mode. I didn't notice any difference when it switched between electric and gas, but charging is not cheap. I charged it at the hotel when I was at zero miles. It cost $47 for a full 25-mile charge, so about $2 per mile. Yes, $2 per mile. Wow. The hourly charge fees were the killer at $4 an hour. I can't imagine the cost of driving cross-country with a full EV. Keep up the good work, and uh, Emmy, yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. I, I've said it before. Uh, let's say everything transitions over to EVs smooth. Everybody loves them. They take off. We have a supply chain that supports them. We have a infrastructure that has gobs of additional power because the, the, the world has smiled and we developed whatever nugget of widgetism that makes all electric vehicles magically fill up in five minutes and everybody is in EV bliss. They will find a way to tax the hell out of them and the electricity so that they are no more affordable than gas. Mark my words. Truckshowpodcast at gmail.com if you have feelings about that very subject. We'd like to hear them. Truckshowpodcast at gmail.com. That's where you'll find us. The Truck Show. The Truck Show. The Truck Show. Oh, oh. Holman, this is where you give our socials normally. I just like the music. Okay, I'll turn it up. So I'm at LBC Lightning. Ah, that's my job. Just enjoy the music for a moment. You know that's me on guitar, right? It's not. No, it's not.
Come on. What? It's awesome. Sometimes we, we talk over the music and people don't get to enjoy how awesome our uh, our podcast show music is. Listen, <laughs> other podcasts don't have as cool of an outro as we do. So that's what I'm saying. No, they just end it. There's like, thanks. Yeah, see you. Talk to you tomorrow. You. It's it's next week. Yeah. All right. Uh, if you want to hit us up on the socials, hit us up at at Truck Show Podcast, at LBC Lighting, at Sean P. Holman. You can hit us up on email, truckshowpodcast at gmail.com, Holman at truckshowpodcast.com, or lightning at truckshowpodcast.com. And guys, we need some voicemails. 657-205-6105. Hit us up on the five-star hotline. Five-star. 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 Hotline. 657-205-6105. Again, I've said this before. If you can't remember the number, just go to our Instagram at Truck Show Podcast and click the call button. All right. If you are looking for a new truck, you need something reliable, dependable, comfortable. Nissan. Powerful. Nissan. Yes. Is that where you're going with this? Yeah. Okay, good. Absolutely. Head on down to your local Nissan dealer where you can check out in person the Nissan Frontier, the Nissan Titan, and the Nissan Titan XD. Of course, the Titan and Titan XDs have the industry's best five-year, 100,000-mile warranty, and Nissan has been supporting the show for five years, going on six. So guess what? You should support them, too. And another company that backs the Truck Show podcast is Banks. Banks Power. Mr. Gail Banks is behind the most powerful digital gauge on the market. It's compact, and yet, man, does it pack a punch. The Banks iDash Super Gauge and the Banks iDash Data Monster tell you everything that your dashboard doesn't. Not only can you read and clear all the trouble codes, if you ever get them, it'll display calculated horsepower. It'll tell you how efficient your intercooler and your turbo are, and so much more. Check out the Banks iDash at bankspower.com. And if you've got a set of blown out shocks on your ride, you want to head to BillsteinUS.com where you can search for your year, make, or model and find something for your vehicle. Bill Stein is the original innovator of the monotube. And whether you've got a stock height truck or lifted, they've got an application for you. Even if you've got some third party lift kit that came with white shocks that are all blown out and leaking everywhere, you'll be surprised at how much more control and how much better ride comfort you can get by swapping in a set of Bill Steins on their page. They'll tell you. Is it zero to one, two to three, four? Whatever your lift height is, there's a set of shocks that are right for you. Again, head over to BillsteinUS.com. We've got them on our rides. You should have them on yours. The Truck Show Podcast is a production of Truck Famous LLC. This podcast was created by Sean Holman and Jay Tillis with production elements by DJ Omar Khan. If you like what you've heard, please open your Apple Podcast or Spotify app and give us a five-star rating. And if you're a fan, there's no better way to show your support than by patronizing our sponsors. Some vehicles may have been harmed during the making of this podcast. These are my confessions as an overlander. I don't wash my vehicle for weeks at a time because if I leave it dirty, people might think I actually do go off-road. I have traction boards on my hood just as a conversation starter because I want to talk about overlanding more. Whenever someone refers to this as my whittle wadder, I laugh, but inside I cry.